Good morning, our dear esteemed guest. My name is Philip Oganakbarobo. I'm the security supervisor, AM Shift. I'm here to give us some of the, tell us about of some of our security tips, what we need to do while we are here. We will not be having any fire alarm testing. We will not be testing our fire alarm equipment this morning. Thus, if we hear any fire alarm at all, via the last speaker provided in this hall, and also the fire alarm system, please let's listen to further instruction that will be given to us to let us know if we need to act or if the alarm is false. Also, we have our elevators, then emergency exit doors. During any emergency, we should ensure we should not use the elevator. We should use our emergency exit door. The one we came by is one of them. Then there is another one very close to the brasserie restaurant. Uh, the third one is just by the end of this uh, hall. All these emergency exits all lead to the ground floor. The most hard point for our guests is just by the flag area. Why that for the staff is by the... Sorry. By the staff gate. There is a security officer on this floor. In case there is any person that is not supposed to be in this meeting, loitering around the meeting hall area, please we should report immediately to the officer. He will call us at the control room and will take appropriate action. And in case we are leaving this meeting hall all at the same time, we should ensure that this door is locked. The F and B coordinator has a key. The, co the event planner should just ask for a key from the coordinator. We have restrooms on this floor. For the female, it's just straight on, just by the side of the brasserie restaurant. For male, it's the last door on your right. Last door on your right. We have emergency response team on ground in case there's any near misses or minor incidents. We also have a healing stripe hospital that is across the road for major incidents or major emergency cases. Please be informed that it is the responsibility of the event organizers to ensure protection of personal items brought into their event center. And let us remind ourselves, if we are using the restroom and we go into the restroom with our phones, let us keep them in our person. If we place them on top of this thing, there's these chances that when we are leaving the room, we might forget those items. So we don't want to do that. These two items are valuable to us. Let us keep them in our person. If there's any question you need more clarification on, please feel free to ask. Thank you. Let's appreciate Mr. Philip. A round of applause for him. Thank you very much. You know, we're women, and I know what um, would come to most of our minds while you're talking about fire is blood of Jesus. We'll not see that in Jesus' name. It's not a portion. That would not happen. But it, just in case something like that happens, these are some of the guidelines that will help us, you know, scale through it. Thank you very much. Okay. Ugochi. Thank you very much. Let's appreciate Mr. Philip one more time. Thank you very much. Well, of course, our program has it that we'll start off with an opening um, remark by the conveners, and we have a um, line up our keynote speakers. In a special way, we'll be inviting, we want to appreciate all our speakers that have taken our time to be here today. Trust me, the organizers have uh, you know, specifically selected speakers that will be doing justice to all of the topics that are being going to be discussed here today. And um, of course, we can take pictures and post and continue the conversation on social media under the hashtag um, WeTechSummit2021. Let's post pictures, let's um, quote our speakers, let's put out fantastic um, quotes there that would linger on even after this event. It's an amazing edition, and of course we're setting the stage for greater editions in the coming year. Uh, guests, ladies and gentlemen, once again, I want you to look at someone beside you and appreciate that woman sitting beside you. I was meant to understand that a woman spends one year in her old years living in this life looking for what to wear. So that is enough reason to appreciate any woman that comes out looking beautiful. Please, can you look at the woman beside you and just tell that woman how fantastic she is? Yes, it's a known fact. If you are 40 years, spent one year out of her 40 years deciding on what to wear, it's not easy. If I want to ask a question, now how many of us with your church mind actually wore the clothes you wanted to wear today? Most of us must have brought out two, three, four clothes and changed it. True or false? If you're on that table, please just give me a hand. Just say, uh-huh, uh-huh. It happened to me, so this is not what I planned, my dear sister. <laughs> so, I mean, that is how it is. So, if you see a woman come out and slay on the red carpet, 
appreciate the woman because she did a whole lot of job ensuring that that clothes comes to mind. Ladies and gentlemen, one more time, the men sitting, look beside that woman and say, well done. Thank you for making up your mind to choose this. And this is the right one you chose. I appreciate them. Thank you very much. It's not easy. It happens. Even men sometimes are getting more confused than us. Men now use lip glosses. They wear powder. They want to slay and all of that. But yes, we understand. Uh -huh. So that's why we're thick and we remain that. I also got to understand again that women have larger pupil than men. And that uh, we blink 19 times in a minute while the men only blink 11 times. So you can see the next time you see of you for the guys, it keeps going up and down. Don't think she's tripping for you. It's her makeup. Okay, so just understand that we blink 19 times per minute. And that's, those guys will feel like, ah, what can code do to me, Jenny? No, no, no. It's our makeup. So you don't have to understand. And last fact before we move into the main event, I was meant to understand that women get drunk faster than men because the female body has less water in its tissue. So if you see us say, okay, we're okay, we don't want to drink. I mean, we know that when we drink, we can misbehave. So we have to just respect ourselves, you understand? So don't think that if you want to go for the drinking competition, what a man can do, a woman can do better. But the new one is, what a woman cannot do does not exist. True or false? <laughs> a round of applause for women again. At this point, I want us to be upstanding. We'll start off this program with the national anthem. With the national anthem, of course, that will serve as our opening prayer for today. If our DJ is ready, you cue us in and then we start. While we urge the conveners to get ready for their opening remark. Louise Aulani is my name. I'm your host for today and it's a pleasure. A round of applause for me now. Okay, please let's be on our feet. We're going to recite it. We're going to recite um, or sing along the national anthem. Let it not be like what happened in the Nigerian Senate. When they said some people in the screen, they said some people should recite the national anthem. The rest is history. But at least for those of us that are forgotten, we can just put it together. You ready? Oh God of creation. Amen. A round of applause for our Nigeria. Proud Nigerian, please appreciate this country. Yes, I'm proud. I'm a proud Nigerian. I believe this country will get better. Why are you looking at me? Are you a Biafran? <laughs> yes, of course. We are all one Nigeria, and um, we keep praying that it gets better by the day. I can see some of our guests found themselves. Maybe we'll tell the organizers or the um, Hotel managers to increase the air conditioner if you want more. Yes, I just want to ensure that our guests are comfortable, ma'am. You're welcome once again. Uguchi, if you're ready. All right, guests, ladies and gentlemen. Um... I'll try and get us as much as the names can come in. We want to appreciate all of our invited guests. We have um, dignitaries from the Nigerian Communications Commission. Please just give us a wave wherever you are. God bless you. Thank you very much for coming. Let's appreciate them as they take their seat. We also have um, the ATCON president here seated. He will also be engaging the women in one of the panel discussion. A round of applause for Engineer Ike Chukundamani. God bless you. The Nitra. very much. We have the MD of Cloudflex. Uh, he was one of the early birds here, always on point each time we have an event. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, thank you for honoring the invitation. We also have uh, uh, Uloma Obichene. 
uh, representative from Catrolers, Nigeria. Just give us a wave from wherever you are. Thank you very much. Onye Chekwa Abimbola, Digital Women Support. Thank you. Please, let's appreciate ourselves. This is how you start. They say women supporting women. Clap. We are not collecting fees for the clap. You know, just the clap might make me feel good. Thank you very much. And you're supporting me. Uh, we also have Engineer Ajisola Abiola, w DWF. Just give us a wave from wherever you're seated. Kende Adela Jaokora for Federal Minister of Women Affairs. Please, let's appreciate uh, our representatives from there. Of course, uh, a special keynote is to be given to us by Minister of Women Affairs, Dame Pauline Tallinn. I hope she gets, um, um, will be with us. If not, of course, our representative is already seated. We hope that, of course, she would uh, meet up with us. Let's appreciate her for that. We also have Onyinye Ene, please a round of applause. Dr. Toby Kinney, the MD Quincy Harbors Limited. A round of applause for her. A very beautiful woman there, doing great as a, a woman executive. Um, Mrs. Tinoade Oguntuyi, please let's appreciate her. We also have engineer Jibola Abiola, Digital World Forum. A round of applause, please. Please, as the names come, get to me. I would recognize everybody. We're all specially invited here. And the fact that you took out time out of your busy schedule to be here shows that we want to drive a way forward and also look at things that are affecting women in business, in technology, and all around. You know, that, of course, we play a very huge part in, you know, pushing this nation forward. And it's, of course, necessary for us to be on the round table on a daily basis and talk about things that really affect us. Guest ladies and gentlemen, one more time, a round of applause for yourselves as I leave in the hands of the DJ while um, we wait for the conveners to give us their remark. And let us know if we're really welcome before we kickstart other activities of the day. Thank you very much for your time and you're welcome once again.
very much, Sound. Uh, good morning again. Uh, once again, I uh, want to welcome everyone seated here. While we were at that very short break, waiting for some of our guests to come in, um, someone very distinguished walked into the building. Uh, he's a woman I look up to. She's my secret mentor. I find I look up to her and, of course, all the things she does within that space. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me to make welcome Director of Google West Africa, Juliet Inuman Chiazo. A round of applause for her, please. <laughs> While we're that, we also meant to understand that um, Maureen Adigwe Okafor, Public Relations Executive at Hope Telecoms, also walked in. A round of applause. Just give us a wave from wherever you are. A round of applause. At this point, we're going to call on the conveners of this beautiful event. Gochi Manuel is someone I've known over the years. She's very dogged when it comes to doing what she knows how to do best. It's a maiden edition and doesn't look like it's the first because she has put in all her time to ensure that this comes to the fore. And in an era where we talk about women supporting women, her co convener Evelyn Izenwa, also did a good job having to back her up that this comes to the fore today. Let guests, ladies and gentlemen, please join me to make welcome Ugochi Emmanuel and Evelyn Izenwa, conveners of the Women in Tech Conference. A round of applause for them, please for their opening remarks. Thank you. Thank you very much, Louisa. I appreciate this. Uh, <laughs> thank you, everyone. Um, I'm shy. <laughs> thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. She's about to read your opening speech. And we're about to start. Thank you. Permit me to take a deep breath. <laughs> uh, the Honorable Minister of Women Affairs and Social Development, Honorable Minister of Communications and Digital Economy, well represented, distinguished guests my colleagues in the media, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of Tech Life Media and Communications, I bring you fraternal greetings and wish to warmly welcome you all to this august occasion. We are indeed privileged and honored with your presence at this event as our effort would have been amounted to nothing if after all the arrangement, nobody was willing to attend. Therefore, I remain highly grateful to you all for being present. We are gathered here today to discuss the place of women in the emerging world of technology and how they have fared in recent times while expanding new ideas and I on ICT and telecoms. Therefore, thereby positioning themselves to effectively play a formidable role in the Nigerian tech space. It is a known fact that there are already a good number of Nigerian women making waves in the technology arena over the years, both within and outside the shores of Nigeria. The event today therefore presents an opportunity for us to be celebrated, bearing in mind that since technology has continued to evolve and transform, transforming lives in remarkable ways, some other women seem to have taken the back seat in technology evolution. The event today is therefore an opportunity to... With this at the back of our mind, today's summit is planned amongst other things to inspire more women to take entrepreneurship opportunities and make and play active roles in the evolving digital economy. As we have gathered here today to listen to those who have remarkably impacted the society in ICT and other spheres of human endeavor, I would like to appeal to every woman to leverage the new technology order by maximizing her talent, developing new skills, and ultimately improving the quality of a life through social, educational, 
and economic in engagement. Ladies and gentlemen, please permit me to use this opportunity to appreciate individuals and corporate entities who have assisted our organization and our program, Tech Life Media and Communications, one way or the other, to sustain its existence within the short time it has been in the online television broadcast space. We remain grateful for your encouragement. With respect to today's event, it is hopeful, it is hopefully expected that each and every one of us will be intellectually richer from what we are going to gain from this summit. I would therefore crave the indulgence of everyone here present to actively participate. Once again, I warmly welcome everyone to this event, which hopefully would be greater than we even anticipated. I wish us all a very pleasant time together. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ugo. Just stay there. A round of applause for Ugo once again. You were so, the butterflies were there, right? Breathe, breathe, breathe. It is not easy to see people coming to support you. Let's appreciate Ugo one more time. The beautiful tech, tech babe. You know, then growing up, anything that has to do with technology science, we used to give them chance because we cannot shout. We say it's for guys. But now ladies have had time to want to do it. I know that anything that a woman wants to do, they do it with their full chest. Remember what I said? What a woman cannot do? It is well. A round of applause for we'll go one more time. Thank you. We thank you and appreciate you for putting this together. Like she said, it is a time where they've you know, carefully selected speakers that will come talk to us about how they've impacted the sector, share challenges, and a way forward. And trust me, it is going to be worth your time. Please let us note that this event is being streamed live on YouTube on Tech Life It Will Go YouTube page. We have other people joining us from uh, across the world because of course we cannot take too many people here because of the COVID-19 protocol. So whoever, for those participants watching us from YouTube, Facebook, and um, uh, Zoom link, please join the conversation. Hashtag uh, we, we Tech Summit 2021. Let's join in the conversation. Let's you know, quote those fantastic um, you know, statements from our speakers that will be gracing uh, the podium this morning. And at the end of the day, at the end of the day, of course, we live here better equipped and, of course, uh, chatting way forward for us as a nation. De guests, ladies and gentlemen, please uh, appreciate the conveners one more time uh, for that, for putting this together. While uh, she was at that, the, um, one of our keynote speakers walked in. She's Dr. Choma Nwachuku, who is the Director, External Affairs and Sustainability, Seplet Energy PLC. Please, let's appreciate her. Thank you very much for taking our time to be here. Um, we'll delve in quickly to our keynote, a special keynote address. It's to be taken by Minister of Women Affairs, Dame Pauline Tallinn. Um, the organizers will let me know if she's around or the representative to do that on her behalf. But again, uh, up next, immediately after that, is all will be coming up right now. We have the MD CEO of Nikomsat, Dr. Abimbola. Alale. I'll just go through the profile a bit. Dr. Abimbola is the current managing director of and chief executive officer of the Nigerian Communication Satellite Limited, NICOMSAT, Abuja, Nigeria. She holds a PhD in Peace, Security, and Strategic Studies from the Institute of Governance and Development Studies, Nasarawa State University, Kefi, Nigeria, a postgraduate degree in Space Studies, and an MBA degree from the International Space University, Strasbourg, France. For about two decades, she has pursued an active career in the space sector, a career that began at the National Space Research and Development Agency, where as the assistant project manager, she was part of the team that championed the manufacture and launch of the first sub-Saharan African communication satellite, NICOMSAT-1, in May 2007. Abimbola Lale actively worked on some national priority projects, such as the NICOMSAT-1, NICOMSAT-1R project, and the establishment of the National Director Home Digital Transmission Center. She stands tall among satellite professionals, not only in Nigeria, but the world, as the visible woman at the head of communication satellite business around the globe. Please, let's appreciate her, you know. She is a member of the American Institute of Aeronautics and Astronautics, AIAA Federation, also a member of the International Space University Forum. She is a board member of Space Generation Advisory Council. Guests, ladies and gentlemen, 
please join me to make welcome this powerful woman, Dr. Abimbola Alale, as she takes her speech. Let's appreciate her. A round of applause, please. Ma'am, I want to be like you when I grow up. Please give me the anointing. Good morning. Great. Good morning, great um, tech women. And um, I want to congratulate the conveners, Ugochi and her partners, for bringing together future women that will rule the technology and digital space in Nigeria. Um, the moderator, thank you for all the accolades. I don't think I deserve that, but thank you for actually honoring me with such um, accolades. Um, First and foremost, I'm here on my person as my, I mean, as on my personal, um, I mean, personally I'm here, but I'm also representing my honorable minister. And I'm very, very delighted to bring greetings from Abuja, Nigeria. And um, my minister wishes you a great, great time and has given me a message to deliver to you all that uh, I already actually have a speech, but I think I'd just rather talk. And if I need to refer to the speech, I will. Um, it's given me the right to congratulate um, Ugochi and the entire management of the, the organizer summit. That's the Women Entrepreneur and Executive Tech Summit. And of course, this theme of the theme of this summit, which is um, Future tech trends, challenges, and opportunities for women and tech entrepreneurs is actually very timely because it's coming at a time where the agenda of the ministry, the economy agenda of the ministry, is actually moving the economy, our Niger national economy, from resource based to ones to, to knowledge and digital economy. And so there's no better time to prepare women. And with um, the Google lead here, uh, Madam Juliet, and everybody, I'm sure there will be lots of rich conversation going on how to prepare us as particles of the new world and the new order. The Ministry of Communications where I, where I work and um, has done so much, you know, prepared Nigeria for the digital, um, the digital world. I mean, because right now you don't talk of just ICT anymore, you talk of digital, everything is going to digitalize. So there are several things that the ministry has prepared and done, several policies developed to make sure that Nigeria is not left behind. Um, notable, uh, during, uh, uh, some of, so I will mention some of those things. During the COVID-19 uh, pandemic, the ministry and its agencies were quick to respond to new global realities and were able to propel the ICT sector, which you are all players, to be the ones that actually stabilize the national economy. You've heard the story severally in different media, but I'm telling you now that based on National Bureau of Statistics report, the ICT sector became the greatest contributor to the national GDP. We moved from, you know, uh, maybe because we now have a, um, we now have somebody who is a professional driving the ministry. We were able to collect all the statistics because previously ICT was doing something, but it was never recognized. But because we now have a professional driving the ministry and the sector, we were able to collect all the, all the statistics and ICT sector is now being given its due position and recognition in the national GDP and national economy. We are being more appreciated that yes, tech is actually the fuel, the energy that drives any economy now, unlike before, where every other sector, you know, takes precedence over ICT. We are increasingly being recognized, and ICT sector remains the fastest growing sector throughout last year, 
and even presently, if with, even with do double digits number. So I'd like to congratulate every one of you because it is because of what you're doing, either s singularly, collectively, that has actually made us rec re um, record such fits in the industry. So I want to say well done, and I want to tell you that the ministry will continue to develop policies to support what we're doing. Um, some of the things that the ministry did with agencies last year, um, including several trainings, we had over 1,607 projects, digital projects, and conducted over almost 220,000 220, trainings across Nigeria. And I want to tell you that deliberately, the ministry made sure that about 45% of women were represented. I will tell you, it is, this, is not, this, is not a, this is not a fallacy because even the training that, the visa training that NIGECOMSA conducted for over 600 youths across Nigeria, we made sure that women were actually part of those trainings because the ministry has a policy to increase the, the internationally acceptable 35% to 45% for women. As many women that show interest in digital and IT skills, we actually carry along. Nice comes out on its own, particularly, we annually we organize ICT, ICT girls and com we do competition. We have lots of pep talks. To, we go around, we do a lot of catch them young um, programs. We're involved in different, um, in promoting different, um, different sector of technologies, but particularly in space sector, because we want, we don't want our generation after we go to leave the space sector, you know, and which is also tech, engineering, ICT, because Space as a composition of both computer, electrical, mechanical, it's, it's, um, it's, the, it's the focal point of all engineering and digital technology. And so we want to encourage as many young girls and as many women to be in that space. And so we keep doing a lot of training, carrying a lot of training and um, training, support, competition to encourage them to develop. Annually we do all that. And I, and I know that every other agency in the ministry, like I said, has a deliberate attempt to make sure that about 45% of women are included in every program, everything that we do in the in the ministry. The, the minister, uh, since they came, has actually tried to resolve so many problems that will make entrepreneurs, because he, he knows that without entrepreneurs and, and tech people like you and I and the digital economy we're talking about will not actually be realized. Yes, our colleagues, the male, they're doing their bits, but women also were doing our bits. And it's drawn, there's a there's, um, national um, policy that actually is deliberate national policy on entrepreneurs, uh, for entrepreneurs that has been developed. And the stakeholders have looked at it and they've accepted this. I'm sure one or two of us here present were part of develop, developing that um, policy. And um, so, so many interventions has been done, for example, the right of way issues, so that the tech people, you can extend your, your, your businesses to the rural areas. The right of way issue has to do with broadband expansion because previously, um, those who want to take their services, the, the telecoms operators want to take their services to the rural areas, they couldn't have access because, um, couldn't provide the services because of right of way, but right now that issue has been resolved. Many of the states are now aligning the lane of cable, um, putting up um, infrastructure. Um, I mean, putting up infrastructures and all that. And of course, a policy to also protect telecom and digital infrastructures are also embed part of what the ministry is doing. So most of technology equipment are now being designated as critical national infrastructure and being protected by the security. Um, agencies. And like I said earlier, over 16 policies were, have been developed by the ministry and included is a national digital innovation on entrepreneurship and startup policy, which addresses the summit. And um, of course, the, the ministry noted in particular that the local innovations and entrepreneurs are very critical to national growth in that policy. And whatever you discuss, you can even come out of the summit I hope you bring back recommendations also to the ministry so that we can put, formulate, if it's not already in the policies that we are, we can actually have them, you know, new policies formulated to drive, you know, women, encourage women, anything, uh, anything you want, I'm sure, with the new minister, 
the way we are, in, with the way we work now in the ministry, it will push us as long as it's for national development. And, um, well, um, on my part, I can't, um, I don't even know what to say because I'm very excited that I see so many women gathered here. Um, I'm really elated that um, Uguchi was able to pull this crowd. Uguchi is because you've been supporting people, and that's why people are here to support you. So I want to congratulate you. Join others to congratulate you. Because I can see you've done so much. I remember you served well, and now you are being served. We are all here to serve you, and I'm very, very proud of you. And uh, I thank everybody for listening and with the last note that we recognize, I personally recognize, and the ministry recognize that entrepreneurship empowerment is the way to go. And on this note, I want to thank you all for your kind attention. I really need to dash to another meeting because I'm having my stakeholders engagements with my stakeholders. So you permit me to please leave you all. I'm sure you have very good answers. I see that table and this table filled with very intellectuals, tech intellectuals that will give you very good um, um, program. So thank you and please have a good day. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Let's appreciate her one more time. And before you go, ma'am, we appreciate you. You were here on time. She was even here earlier than every one of us here. And because, of course, you understand uh, what it is to you know, be at the event. And ma'am, we want to express our, I mean, send our warm regrets. A warm regards to the Honorable Minister and all of the interventions that the ministry is doing. We appreciate and we see that. And Ugochi, she has given you her word that at the end of today, a communique can be sent to the ministry. You know, so while we are talking about all of the things that we'll be focusing on today, at the end of the day, it should lead us a step closer to our achievements and our dreams as women entrepreneurs and executives in tech. A round of applause for Dr. Abimbola one more time as she honorable and respectfully takes her leave. Okay, before she goes, the uh, convener wants to present to her a plaque. Um, we're going to do that quickly at the podium, please. I want to respectfully please uh, indulge the president of ArtCon to help us um, present this. Let's do that on the podium, please. A round of applause for our uh, engineer. And the ArtsCon president, Engineer Ike Chukunamani, who do us the honors. Thank you very much, ma'am, to have a safe journey back home. Let's appreciate her as she takes her leave. Thank you. All right, going over our program again, we'll be having... a goodwill message. Goodwill messages, we'll be taking that in turns. Our very first will be coming from... I hope Angina Ikechiko didn't go with her. <laughs> okay, of course, he's seated. <laughs> Engineer, thank you very much for your time. Our first goodwill message will be taken by the president of ArtCon, Engineer K. Chukun Namani. Please, let's appreciate him as he comes on stage. A round of applause for him, please. Thank you, sir. Um, thanks. I guess I can take it. Well, thanks, uh, everybody, for coming. We definitely appreciate the conveners of this event. This is one event that uh, ArtCon in particular is excited about uh, because it not only does uh, to deal with uh, ICT, but also women participation in ICT, which is an area we know from all the analysis we've done is one of a critical part that will move this country forward. Um, so on behalf of ArtCon, we congratulate the organizers and we are hoping that as a uh, was said in the earlier speech, a lot of uh, industry impact and initiative will come out of this event today. And we are here, I'm gonna likely be here all day, and we'll participate fully, thanks. Thank you very much, uh, Engineer Ikechuku, always supportive of the ICT industry. Please, let's give him a round of applause one more time. 
We appreciate you, sir. All right, I'll be altering the, um, the program as directed by my guys. And of course, to fit into the situation of things, some of our guests need to be in another engagement. And um, we just have to juggle it. Please uh, bear with me. At this time, we'll be taking a keynote speaker from Dr. Choma Mwachuku. She is a multi-skilled professional with almost 30 years extensive experience across key sectors. She has led teams to build enviable corporate brands, develop and sustain relationships with diverse business stakeholders, and achieve leadership with corporate social responsibility and sustainable sustainability initiatives. She began her career in academia as a lecturer at the Lagos State University and the University of Lagos, Nigeria. Over seven years, she successfully contributed to students' intellectual development, academic research, and publications in communications. Mwachiku's career also evolved through many years in the banking sector. She held key positions in corporate and public affairs, communications, product and service management, and human resource management. She later joined Zane Telecommunications, where she worked in the company's operations in Nigeria and in the Middle East, uh, Kingdom of Bahrain, serving as on various strategic projects for its worldwide business operations covering 24 countries. Currently, Dr. Mwachiku is responsible for developing strategies and leading teams to deliver business results for SEPLAT through brand and reputation management, managing community partner regulator relationship, deploying corporate social responsibility and sustainability strategic goals. She has also made significant impact in building and sustaining the positive global reputation of SEPLAT brand, resulting in superior public confidence and the creation of outstanding brand equity of the company as a respected leading Nigeria oil and gas independent. Dr. Nwachiko holds doctoral and master's degrees from the University of Ibadan and Bachelor of Arts from the University of Ife, now Obafemi Awolowo University. She's also an alumna of Harvard Business School. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me to make welcome Dr. Choma Nwachiko. Please a round of applause as she takes the podium. Thank you very much for that very warm welcome. And um, as you read that, I wondered again uh, if you were talking about me. It's just me. Thank you, everybody, for trying to listen to me. I would like to stand by existing protocol. And firstly, I know she's left, but I want to greet the Honorable Minister and congratulate them for what they're doing. What she said is very, very impressive, uh, making sure that we women are taken care of in the programs they run and get others to make sure women are taken care of. And I'm sure we are all here, ladies and gentlemen, because we are interested in what concerns the women. So um, I must firstly start by saying thank you very much to the organizers for letting me hold this space to give the keynote address. It's actually uh, a thing of delight for me to know that people are looking at women and taking on courses that normally they would take the backstage. So I really congratulate you when you came to me with this program. I was excited, even though I had uh, a dear need of time. I said, no matter what it is, I will be here today. And um, I'm happy, actually, that I'm here. Uh, the topic we're discussing, future trends in technology, Nobody wants to be left behind. So whether we're talking about future, whether we're talking about the present, nobody left, wants to be left behind. So um, for this conference, I noticed that um, you have a lot of details on what to speak about concerning what is impactful for the women. I want to get, start by saying some insights around what is impacting women entrepreneurs. And I believe most most people here in this room are women entrepreneurs. So I really congratulate you because it takes a lot to want to have your own business and do your own, you know, undertake your own business. So for women entrepreneurs, we know that for women entrepreneurs, there are a lot of constraints. They have a lot of constraints. Uh, if it is not cultural, it is inability to raise funds. If it's not inability to raise funds, it is because of the need to meet up with family expectations. 
So there are a lot of inhibitions that can, you know, face the woman entrepreneur. So when we have summits like this, it gives you opportunity to, to network, to share aspirations. So coming here today and having this summit is indeed a good thing. Well done, the organizers. Well done for every one of us who is sitting here today. So, so the good thing is, despite the challenges, it's been noted that women are very crucially important in development of the country, in bringing about social economic development of the country. The women play a critical role in making sure that if it's not taking care of the family, even the, at the workplace, if they don't have a family, to, so to speak, to take care of, they give their best. It's actually been noted that organizations led by women actually perform much better. So, <laughs> having said that, yes. So, so having said that, it challenges us as women to always do the best we can whenever we hold the position. I know that we have a lot of speakers who will speak to very important um, issues concerning what would make you succeed as a human tech. But let me highlight some of the few things I think that are also very critical, just to add to what others will come uh, here to speak today. I think for us women, it is important to appreciate the benefits of networks. And if we're in this room already, it means we appreciate that. But I'm emphasizing it because we have a way to not understand how important building network alliances and alliances are. So I really want to encourage us that we have come here today to take advantage of this network and to continue in that light to take more advantage of network building. As women also, I'd like to encourage us to say, let us try to build our skills as much as we can. It is very important because without building the skills, you will not be able to stand the challenges that are ahead of us. Um, the company where I work, Seplat, we realize that it's very important to encourage building of skills. So we, we make sure we develop programs that, for example, one of the programs is STEP, Seplat Teachers Empowerment Program. Uh, what this does is to make sure that the teachers are taught how to teach STEM education effectively. An ability to teach science subjects in schools cannot be overemphasized. So for us, no matter the age where we are, I know the digital age doesn't allow us at times to realize that we need to purposefully build our knowledge and skill set. So I want to encourage us to make sure at any stage where we are, to find opportunities to build our skill sets. Another thing I want to talk about is building your brand. Because I believe that in this room we have female entrepreneurs. Again, I congratulate you for being able to start your own business. It's not easy. But there's something you must know that building a brand is not just for the big companies. When you build your brand, you stand out. When you stand out, you achieve what you want. And the best way to build your brand is to consciously do so. You need to ask yourself critical questions. How do I want to differentiate myself? So I encourage all of us to build your personal brand and build the brand of your business so you can aspire to get more. Again, taking up business risk and challenges would always confront you. I wish you luck in doing so, but you must also know that you have to actively want to take risk. Taking up finances might look huge and challenging, but to succeed, those are some of the risks we need to take as businesses. So I've looked at the program of today, and I assure you coming here today will not be a waste of time. So I'm excitedly looking forward to being part of it. And I know we have many role models in the room. I know the director of Google is here, uh, Judith, and a number of other women inspirational uh, women who are here today, if I didn't mention you. But for us women, let us hold ourselves together and support one another. And that's exactly why I became a part of this program, to make sure that I support these young ladies who have put this together. 
So thank you everybody for coming to support them. And I encourage all of us to please be a part of it. Thank you. Thank you very much. A round of applause for Dr. Choma Wachuku, Director of External Affairs and Sustainability, Seplet Energy PLC. Please let's appreciate her. And also all things that Seplet is doing to improve on STEM education. I was trying to look at some of my random facts before this event, and I meant to, I saw one that also caught my attention, saying that 75% um, of non-STEM jobs require basic STEM skills, so we cannot run away from this reality. And that 33% of how much more women with STEM jobs end than women with non-STEM jobs. So for people that have this basic science and tech you know, background, we are, have more opportunities. And like she said, there are a whole lot of challenges being a woman entrepreneur in Nigeria. Those challenges are meant to come, but we'll scale through. Thanks to the fact that she also mentioned that we have a lot of mentors here. We can network, talk about all of the challenges we are having in our businesses and within the sector and chat way forward. At the end of the day, we will not go back the same way we came. Amen. Can I have a believer in the house? Amen. A round of applause for Doctor one more time. At this point, we're going to go over to a message from the EVC of the NCC, Professor Omar Garba Dambata, the Executive Vice Chairman and Chief Executive Officer of the EVC and CEO of the Nigerian Communications Commission. Born in Dambata Local Government Council of Kanu, he obtained his BNG, MSc degrees from the Technical University of Rocklaw in Poland and his PhD from the University of Manchester Institute of Science and Technology UK respectively. He served as a lecturer in the Department of Electrical Engineering, Faculty of Technology of Bayero University, Kano for 28 years, where he taught courses in telecommunications engineering and electronics and held academic positions of Dean of Faculty and Head of Department in different times. His main administrative responsibilities in the university included Deputy and Acting Dean of Student Affairs, Administrator of the Works Department and later Director of the Center for Information Technology, CIT. He was also a member of over 60 university committees and tax forces, including numerous stints as chairman. In administrative and other responsibilities outside the university, he served on over 20 committees, prominent among which was his chairmanship of the Implementation Committee of Kanu State University of Science and Technology, after which he became a pioneer deputy and acting vice chancellor when he took office in 2001. Professor Dambata was supervised more, has supervised more than 60 PhD and projects in diverse areas of telecommunications and also served as external examiner to seven universities and polytechnics and an assessor, technical reviewer and editorial member of eight research journals. Guests, ladies and gentlemen, he was the vice president of the Digital Bridge Institute, DBI, International Center for Advanced Communication Studies, which was established in the year 2004 by the Nigerian Communications Commission, NCC, to build capacity for the Nigerian African telecom industry in the diverse areas of information and communication technology. Until his appointment as the EVC, Professor Dambata served as the acting vice chancellor of the Kanu University of Science and Technology, Woodhill. Guests, ladies and gentlemen, we welcome Professor Omar Gamba Dambata, ably represented by the Deputy Director, New Media and Information Security uh, Department, Mrs. Olatukumbo Oyeleye. I hope I got that right. <laughs> Thank you very much, ma'am. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Good morning, everybody. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, permit me to stand on existing protocol. I'm going to try to be like the professor, but I'm not a professor yet. Hopefully, I'll get there. Um, um, I'm going to try not to read the speech because I think the initial speakers have actually spoken to the event, but I would just like to point out some few things. Well, um, in July 2021, we read in the leadership paper that Nigerian women account for 41 ownership of micro businesses in Nigeria, with over 23 million female entrepreneurs, making Nigeria almost the highest entrepreneur globally. But with that, there's still insufficient real economic real economy, empowerment, and inclusion for women across the real sector. In July, the same July, we read that 27% of the CEOs in our banking sectors are actually female. That's good. I'm sure we can even do much better, and I believe this can be replicated across the um, respective real sectors of the economy. Despite the gender gap and the social challenges 
women are facing around the world, including those in the Middle East and Africa, women are still leading, in leading the way in unnecessary the power of the digital economy. It's a digital era, it's a new norm. We all have to jump on this and we all have to make the best of it. Investing and supporting the younger generation, digital development is very critical especially female. We have to find way to be mentors to younger ones. We have to find way to encourage our young ladies and girls to take part in this new race. There are many things to win. As taking advantage of this year's ITU 10th Global Girls in ICT celebration, being the 10th anniversary, what ITU has done is to have an event for each month to develop much more progressively. I totally agree with that. Just like the last speaker said, women do make a lot of difference when you give them responsibilities. I believe we are using our talent very well, and I believe that we, as we continue to do this, we also see ourselves as mentors to younger women, to younger girls, and enable us to strive and chart the new path in this digital economy. I thank you all. Thank you, organizer. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, distinguished guests. Thank you, females, for coming out and supporting each other. And I wish us a successful deliberation. Thank you very much. We can do better. Please, let's appreciate our more time. Thank you very much. Uh, this is Olatu Kumbo Oyeleye, the Deputy Director of New Media and Information Security Department. Thank you very much. And please do extend our warm regards to the NCC uh, EVC. Thank you very much. All right, we're moving, we're moving, we're moving on. And while um, those speeches were going on, um, the CEO of CyberSafe, Confident Stably, walked in. A round of applause for her. Just wave, us, wave to us wherever you're seated. Thank you very much. And I hope you've gotten more, more, more laptop for your girls. <laughs> Thank you for what you're doing. And um, of course... Uh, the representative of the owner of Ife, Oba Adeye Yogunwusi, the Ojaja One, came in. Uh, let's welcome Ade Konle. Mrs. Ade Konle, please, where she is seated. Thank you very much, ma'am. Thank you very much. And please do help us extend a warm regards to the owner of Ife. Thank you very much. We're moving gradually, gradually. And of course, uh, we'd have quite a few messages and keynotes to take up next on the program. Is a keynote from Juliet Ihimo and Chiazo. She's the head director, Google West Africa. She stands tall in a male dominated technological environment, and she is unarguably doing well as director of Google West Africa, even though she may not be as popular as the likes of Sherlyn Sundberg and Marisa Meyer. I, I, I mean, I beg to disagree, she's as popular, even more popular than that. She has so proven. Uh, her worth as a top-rated technology and business leader with a lot, uh, list of achievements which she would always want to ascribe to her great team's effort. As the head of Google's operations in West Africa, the continent's largest internet community, Juliet is charged with the responsibility of representing the company in all its business development projects and partnership opportunities in the region. She holds an executive MBA from the London Business School, a postgraduate degree in computer science from the University of Cambridge, UK. She obtained a bachelor's degree with first class honors in computer engineering from the Obafemi Awolowo University, Ileife. Great Ife! Are you here? Great Ife! Now let you walk out come. <laughs> she is a recipient of the London Business School Global Women's Scholarship, and at Cambridge University, she received two scholarly awards uh, Selwyn College Scholar and the Malaysian Commonwealth Scholar. Prior to her appointment at Google as Nigeria Country Manager, Juliet was the General Manager Strategic Business Unit of Champs PLC, where she was responsible for leading and formulating strategies for Champs Strategic Business Unit. She also worked with Microsoft UK for six years, initially as a Program Manager managing strategic projects for MSN Europe, Middle East, and Africa, and then Business Process Manager for MSN International, covering 11 subsidiaries worldwide. She received the Microsoft Ship IT Award for successfully launching the new MSN online subscription business in the UK, Spain, Italy, and Germany. Her earlier career was at the Shell Petroleum Development Company as Performance Monitoring and Quality Assurance Supervisor from 1995 to 1997. She is also a pioneer member of the Academic Computer Network for Developing Countries sponsored by the International Center for Theoretical Physics, ICTP. 
Italy in 1995, which resulted in a campus-wide area network at OAU Ileife. Guests, ladies and gentlemen, please join me to make welcome <laughs> Director of Google West Africa, Juliet Ehiman. Please, let's keep clapping until she comes on stage. Thank you very much, ma'am, for honoring our invitation. And thank you for all you do for Ileife because you graduated there. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for the honor. It's great to be here. And it's always great to be in a gathering of women entrepreneurs and executives, because I'm sure you'll all agree with me that women rock. <laughs> and I appreciate the men here, too, because at the end of the day, it is a partnership. But I think, um, as some of the previous speakers mentioned, we really need to acknowledge the incredible role that women have been playing and continue to play in society. And I know that this is just the beginning, that the opportunities are endless, the possibilities are endless. Now, I often ask this question, where is the next billion dollar idea going to come from? We have a mix of business executives and entrepreneurs in the room. And so I'm going to actually really point to some of the amazing developments we've seen in the entrepreneurial space right here in Nigeria. We've had some amazing unicorns. Unicorns are uh, startups that are, or businesses that are valued over a billion dollars. A lot of you are familiar with Flutterwave. They had an investment of $170 million at the beginning of this year and were valued at over a billion dollars. Paystack was acquired for over $200 billion last year. These are all Amer uh, Nigerian grown companies. Now, if we go to the next slide, please. And we know that there's a lot of opportunity in this country and on this continent to make a difference. On the flip side of every challenge is opportunity. There are many problems to solve. There are many areas where we still have the opportunity to make a difference, provide solutions and services. And that also presents an opportunity to develop solutions that can scale. And so whenever I ask where is the next billion uh, dollar idea going to come from, I believe that it can come from this country and potentially it can come from this room. Why not? And this is not just wishful thinking. There's a lot of evidence pointing to the fact that women in Nigeria and across Africa are really stepping up and doing amazing stuff. I published, it looks like you're having some trouble with the slides. Okay, can you have them up please? A few years ago for International Women's Day, I wrote an article, uh, it, was, it was published in The Guardian. The title of the article was, The Next Bill Gates is Female and African. Now, it, that article received a lot of positive interest. It's funny, some people didn't even bother to read the article. Just the title was very inspiring to a lot of people. And I said that with every belief because we know the incredible talent that exists here and we know what women are capable of. Let's look at some local examples. If we go to the next slide, these are women that some of you are familiar with, and I'm sure uh, you know, some, some people in this room can be right up there on those slides, right? So there's Dr. Ola, the founder of Flying Doctors. You may be aware of them. It's an, um, it's an emergency, a medical emergency service, and um, it's the first indigenous air ambulance service in West Africa. Doing really well. Temigiwa uh, Tubosun, founder of Life Bank. Now these people identified gaps in the market. They saw a need and just really organized themselves to be able to meet that need. Now for Life Bank, it was really around you know, medical supplies, particularly blood, right? Um, and uh, in, in the last five years, they've been able to distribute over 26,000 products to more than 10,000 patients across uh, over 700 hospitals. And she was named the winner of Jack Ma's Africa Netpreneur Prize. If we go to the next slide, just a few more examples. These are in the health space. If we go to other sectors, and we see this across multiple sectors, 
Um, in um, environmental sustainability, Billy Keys, the founder of WeCyclers, looking at, uh, which is a social enterprise, and um, just really looking at waste recycling, particularly plastics, and um, ha has really made a lot of impact and received uh, some great global commendation for the work that she's been doing. And uh, in the finance space, Odun Piggy Vest, again, uh, this is a simple app um, in the finance space. It uh, promotes savings and investments. And in 2020, she had paid back $90 billion to users. And also, she won the Future Awards Africa Prize in Technology in 2019 and was on the Forbes Africa 30 Under 30 Technology List. If we go to the next slide, so more and more, we're seeing that that article, the next Bill Gates is female and African, is not far-fetched. We have Ni Nigerian women doing amazing things already. If we go to the next slide, and that would, uh, it, that's in the content creation space as well as entertainment. So um, CCME, some of you may know of her. She's a YouTube content creator. She has over 62 million views to her content, just really sharing her passion and content on YouTube for a global audience. And if I take it out of Nigeria a little bit globally, we have people like Oprah Winfrey, who is an incredible woman, and she was, uh, she's the first black female billionaire in the United States, and uh, this was as far back as 2003. So these are just some examples of women that are doing amazing things in this environment and beyond. If we go to the next slide, And like I said, that can be any of us in this room. Whether you're an entrepreneur, where you've identified a need that needs to be solved, given the scale within um, Nigeria and Africa, 1.2 billion people, there is a great opportunity to actually scale homegrown solutions. And I mentioned that on the flip side of every challenge is opportunity. Yes, if we look around us, all those examples I mentioned, those people were solving specific problems, but doing a very good job of it and then scaling, right? So the invitation to everyone is spot the opportunity and be inspired. Rather than being daunted by the challenges that we see around us, we can be inspired by the op opportunity and the possibility to actually make a difference. If we go to the next slide. The next invitation is to think big, to 10x the idea. So at Google, we have this concept, which we call moonshot thinking. That is when you create an idea or a vision that is so big, right? It's like a moonshot. It's like putting a man on the moon. Several decades back, that was considered impossible, but we succeeded in doing it as, as human beings. So we talk about moonshot thinking, because when you create a moonshot, it actually frames how you try to solve the problem. It puts you in a different space. So we call it 10x thinking. So rather than looking to grow by 10%, you're looking to grow 10 times. If I have an educational app, and I want 10,000 people to use the app, there's a way I will approach going to market. Maybe I'll consider uh, you know, putting something on social media platforms and a few other digital platforms. Maybe I'll talk to a few schools, you know, and you know, I, I'll get my 10,000. But if I create an app and I say, I want 10 million people to use that app, I will be doing a different set of activities. I'll probably be thinking about talking to the Ministry of Education to have that education app as part of curriculum. I may be thinking about even going beyond Nigeria. You know, there's a, just a different way I'll play the game so that even if I don't hit 10 million, I'm probably gonna hit 5 million, certainly much more than 10,000. So we talk about thinking big, right? Creating that moonshot. How can you solve this problem or meet this need that you've identified? It doesn't mean that we go from zero to hero overnight. Like we think big, but we don't do the, uh, the due diligence in front of us. We always talk about think uh, global, but act local. So we identify the need, and within our businesses, within our service offerings, we ensure that we are performing the due diligence, right? That creates the positive customer feedback that we can leverage on to scale. 
So if we go to the next slide, so it's be inspired, spot the opportunity and be inspired, think big and take action. Of course, uh, we can have a great, a moonshot idea, a big vision, but if we don't take the ne necessary steps, it's like wishful thinking. And this is where I would really talk about the power of technology because technology just really transforms what is possible. This has always been the case, but I think it's become a lot more apparent following the pandemic. We always say, if we go to the next slide, that digital transformation is the new normal. If you think about it during the pandemic, the reason why we were able to stay connected, the reason why some businesses were able to maintain continuity was because of technology. And those organizations that were better at recognizing the trend and adapting accordingly using technology were those that thrived and individuals as well. So for example, let's take professions like fitness instruction, right? It was, it was very quick to see that people were not coming into gyms anymore. And a number of fitness instructors took that service online, right, with uh, you know, Zoom or Google Hangouts or um, other platforms. Now, if you think about the implications of this, because I mentioned that on the flip side of every challenge is opportunity. If you think about the implications of that, what that means is, one, you cut out travel time, because if, for example, as a fitness instructor, you have to go to location to uh, conduct that service, now you, don't, you cut out travel time. Also, more interestingly, you cut out your consumer boundaries. Because if I'm doing my fitness instruction online, then it doesn't matter whether my client is in Nigeria or in London or anywhere else in the world. As long as I'm good in what I do, I can market myself to a global audience. And that just really opened up the space. And I saw a number of people really take advantage of this. In the education space as well, I know of some people in the US that started getting tutorial instructors from Nigeria for their children. Maths, Yoruba, you know, whatever subject. If you're good, those concepts are not limited by geography. It's the same concept everywhere, right? So the invitation to everyone in the room is, let's see how we can leverage the existing trend, the opportunities that it's creating, use technology to see how we can build on what we have and scale. Uh, if we go to the next slide. And there are so many tools and platforms that we can take advantage of. So if we move to the next one. There's so many tools and platforms. A number of you are present on social media. Um, the, the different organizations also have special programs and just really uh, development opportunities that are free that you can take advantage on to build your business. There are how-to videos for a number of things online on YouTube and other platforms. You know, if you go on search, there's hardly anything you're trying to do that you wouldn't find a how-to guide for or a webinar. Maybe you're trying to create a business plan and you've never done it before. You'll find templates, how-to guides, everything, all the tools that you need online. And um, I just pulled up some um, uh, examples of tools that are helpful from a Google perspective, but a number of organizations have variations of this. It's important to just go online and see what's available that really speaks to your own need and um, that can help you uh, de develop to the next level. So for example, for entrepreneurs, we have Google for Startups, right? This is a three month, it's a free, it's a three month mentoring program that you can take advantage of. Um, it includes access to uh, experts, mentors, um, uh, grants, infrastructure, and so on. I'm actually pleased to say some of the unicorns I mentioned earlier, Paystack, Flutterwave, they were among the early entrepreneurs that went through this program. Um, if Grow with Google, a lot of tools for really promoting your business um, from an educational perspective or in various sectors, if you just go online and search Grow with Google, there's a microsite that has a lot of uh, resources that you can take advantage of. Google My Business as well. Um, and then for those in the tech space and the uh, enthusiasts, we have Google developer groups. We've also gone the extra mile to encourage female Google developer groups. So there are female Google developer groups scattered around the country and you know, they meet periodically, um, share res resources, uh, go through training. We have a 
Women Tech Makers Conference that happens once every year, which is a gathering of women that are either active or interested in the technology space, where you get to meet other women in tech, you get to learn about the latest trends, you get supported on your journey. Um, and uh, uh, there's a Black Founders Fund that we announced in June, which is really for content creators right, just the um, black entrepreneurs that are looking at creating content. There is a fund, a $3 million fund that we announced in June that is, is, is available for you to apply to. Again, you can get details on all of these by just going on, on search, Google search, and searching. And there are lots of other opportunities, a lot of free training and so on. If we go to the next slide. We've gone past the time when um, people can make statements like, ah, I'm just not very tech savvy. I'm not, tech is not my thing. I'm not a techie. We've gone past that. Especially if you're a business executive or an entrepreneur, you would really be missing a trick if you don't consciously build capacity in yourself around tech. If there are some things you're struggling with, find a way to get past that. Maybe there's someone that can sit with you and put you through. Maybe there's an online, or maybe you need to attend a class. Whatever it would take to just demystify that tech um, offering that, just you, you, that you're daunted by, really providing, because that's what's going to resonate uh, with users. And how can we build on that? How can we adapt to the environment as well as to the trends that we're seeing? And I talked about moonshot thinking. How can we think global and, and start locally? And once we've gotten it right, we have to get the basics right. Once we've gotten it right locally, then we are positioned for scale. And so, as I mentioned earlier with my article, the next Bill Gates is female and African, I'm looking forward to uh, hearing breaking news that an African business was valued at $10 billion. And more importantly, for this uh, context, a female-owned black business. Thank you. Wow, always a pleasure listening to you. A round of applause for Julie for her time and all of the fantastic things she's doing at Google, you know, to empower our people. She said something that tech is not rocket science. So today, some people feel it's rocket science, you know, and um, we're seeing people doing great things that never had even the background in science and technology. So I want to learn how to, I want to be a coder. I can learn. <laughs> at this, my old age, I can do it. Absolutely. Sorry, now. I'm not old, okay. <laughs> All right, thank you very much. A round of applause for her one more time. And she started, please, you're not going yet. We're gonna give the, are you giving her stuff now? You said something, okay. Yes, thank you very much. Please, as she takes her seats, please, thank you very much. She started by asking a question where the next billion dollar uh, business will come from. And she said it could be in this room. Yes, it could be from this room. And of course, uh, she went on and on. And I caught the fact that she said we should be inspired. We should think big and take action don't just i mean don't just sit there and think because you're thinking take action please a round of applause for juliet one more time we're getting too serious you know women we're serious and at the same time we know how to relax right is kcc ready to give us some to break it kkc ready to break it down a bit for us to break it down but before then um um are you ready with my just one of my slides i want us to to take us back memory lane a bit are you ready um for some of us I said something when I said, this is my old age, and Julia said, I'm not, oh yeah, thank you. But for some of us here, there are some um, childhood memories that of course we still remember. And we're going to remind ourselves one more time. I don't know if you're ready, uh, if you have some of those stuff for me. Let's see how much of that we can remember. Casey, please get ready to thrill us with some good sounds from your guitar. All right. Okay, while we're trying to get that, maybe we'll just call KCC, or KKC. Yeah, there's a K and there's a C. <laughs> Are you ready? Please give it up for the beautiful, beautiful, beautiful songstress. As she does her thing. After that, we're still going to come back. I want to take us down memory lane a bit. Are you ready? Please give it up for her. Women are doing fantastically well in every, every sphere of life. And um, yes. Yes, need I tell you that why she's good at the strings, with the strings, she's also into tech. So it can be techy and fun at the same time, true or false? 
Yes, so please a round of applause for a tech savvy songstress, KCC. KKC. Oh, please, pardon me. Sorry. Thank you very much. Are you ready? Hello. Good morning, distinguished guests. My name is KKC and I'm really honored to be here. The theme of this event is one that is really special to my heart because I recently went back into tech. So I studied geophysics in school. Then when I finished, I went into digital marketing. I went into skincare. I have a couple of businesses that I run and I also have an NGO. But then recently, I just said to myself, you know what? Tech is really the new order of the day, so let me go back into my first love for tech, which was actually Python programming. So right now, I'm currently into data science using Python programming. I'm a singer, a songwriter, a guitarist, because this is actually my first love. And I'm going to be singing some songs that I wrote and composed to myself. So I hope you enjoy it. Thank you. <laughs> Things that you said 
going to do one more song. It's a mashup of, <laughs> thank you. It's a mashup of some Nigerian songs, and if you know, you can also sing along. Don't go anywhere. A round of applause for KKC. This time around, I'll get it. Interesting. Wait, oh, the last song she sung, she sung or sang or singing. It was, she was actually singing science students in a more touch way. Kosovo, Kosego, I'm a science student. You're not touched it up. Please sing it again. They are a science student. Now, let me take a shoe. That was fantastically done. A round of applause for her one more time. You have a fantastic voice. Thank you very much for honoring us. And of course, you're going places. Give it up for KKC. Wow. Wow. Interesting. All right. She has done her own Ajebo version. Are you ready? Um, I want us to, to do ours. Something's going to come up on screen. Yes. I got this and it's called Random Memories from Childhood. How many of you know this advert? If you don't know it, just spark. That means uh, you are in Domi generation. Let's sing together. The first song is um, Limka advert. How many of you remember it? All right, let's go together. Everybody come together. If you know it, sing it together. The sun and the moon together. I'm not hearing your voice, so. Music and dance together. Lime and lemon you drink together. Oh, yeah. All you need is to drink. Limta. All you need is to drink. Lime and lemon to drink. If you were pronouncing it well when you were small, raise your hand. Some of us used to say, Lemon, 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 lemon. If you knew it before now, don't, call, don't, don't lie. Raise up your hand. None of us. All right, let's go. To, don't give them a. Oh, yeah, let's go. The second one. One, two. 
Me, I like my country. I like the land and people. Everything is day for Nigeria. Hands to make it a load. I like how. Me, I like my country. People. Everything is day for Nigeria. Make we join hands to make nine. Clap for these people that went to attack our Nigerian primary. The last one before we go, this one is for two people. Joy Girl. I mean, if you remember Joy Girl. If you know, let me come to you with the microphone. I can offer it to if you know it. Are you ready? Who knows? Are you ready? Oh, yeah, let's start. Want to go? Hey, Joy Girl, you can help the looks you get when you're around. All the guys can to stop. Ah, mmm. <laughs> no, no, we're gonna with your foot, so you're singing. You can't. <laughs> Who knows it from the church mind? Who knows it? You are too young. Oh my God. You are too young. Who knows? So let's get it one more time. Hey, joy girl, you can help the looks you get when you're around. All the guys can help but stop and see. You've got that joy girl quality. If you have the joy girl quality, have applause for yourself. <laughs> In this hall, you have old. Old in this people. All right, get ready, gentlemen, a round of applause for yourselves. At this point, we're going to move quickly, quickly. I told you earlier on. Okay, please, can I have that? Um, that um, a special keynote address by the Minister of Women Affairs, Dame Pauline Tallinn, ably represented here. Please permit me to go through her profile briefly. The name Pauline Tallinn, OFR, has become a household one, not only among the women folk on whose behalf she has created a paradigm shift through pragmatic advocacy for gender equality, but also among women, men and women whom she dared and defeated in various contests. All right, please permit me to quickly do this. Uh, to quickly recognize guests that came in earlier on. Uh, for some, they were likely to be leaving soon. I just need to do this honors. Please join me to make welcome Otumba Best Man Jumbo Nze. He's the head team Nigeria for change. A round of applause for him. He's been very instrumental in putting this together. A support system to the convener of this event. Thank you very much for your time. Also, I have with me our guys in the industry. The head media and public relations NCC, Mrs. Grace Ujubo. Hope I got that right. Thank you very much, ma'am. You're welcome. We also have the principal manager, licensing and authorization of the Nigerian Communications Commission, Mrs. Trudy Tony Awusako. Hope I got that right. Thank you very much for your time. Um, of course, confidence that we walked in. I hope I greeted her earlier on. Thank you very much for your time. And as the name comes, please uh, just permit me, I would read out as it gets to me. Guests, ladies and gentlemen, I'll continue with um, Pauline's uh, citation. She was born on the 8th of January, 1959. Currently, the Honorable Minister of Women Affairs hails from Shendam, in Shendam local government area of Plateau State, where she had earlier education. After her secondary education, she was admitted into the University of Joss, where she bagged a Bachelor of Science degree in Sociology in 1982. Armed with a university degree, she served both the local and state government in various capacities and ultimately capped her academic qualifications with a certificate in strategic public sector negotiations from John F. N. Kennedy School of Government, Harvard University, USA. Having found her niche in education sector, Pauline Tallinn founded the first private nursery and primary school in Shandam, an education enterprise that she has been a pace setter for both government and other private school establishments in Plateau State. She had evidently made her mark in the education sector and obviously inspired her choice as a commissioner for education, for social development, youth, sports, and cultural Plateau State between 1994 to August 1995. In January 2015, she joined the All Progressives Congress where she has also proved her mettle politically and currently serves as Minister of Women Affairs, Mrs. Pauline Tallinn. 
She has been widely commended for unreserved contributions for the political and economic area and has received several awards and commendations both locally and internationally. Thank you very much, sir. I'm sorry. Um, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I, my name is Otsumba, very, very funny, Otsumba, best man, Jumbo Nze. Somebody said, hey, the Otsumfi Wagbe of Aguda land. And the Otsumba Tunlusha of Ibogu. Omo Ibo Deniyo. Ah, it's my pleasure to thank God for this beautiful event when women gather. I said something now, they have said, things won't happen if only women don't, uh, don't strive. But it, the moment a woman puts her hand on something, it excels, and it must be successful. And I just hope this um, conference won't end at the, at the level of talk, talk, talk. I think we'll take it further by seeing actual activations and um, implementation of whatever community will come up with here. Once more, I say kudos to Ugochi. She's actually my younger sister, same mother, same father. Congratulations. And every woman that puts this together, I say congratulations. And I'm sure the next edition will be far bigger than this. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Otumba. God bless you. <laughs> Thank you for the support. We appreciate you. Uh, at this point, we're going to be calling on the conveners to present a certificate to our two earlier uh, speakers, Juliet Ahimo and Dr. Choma. A round of applause for them, please. It's a very busy day. Yes, we understand and we appreciate all of taking our time. We'll permit them as they have to come. All right, please, I want to crave the indulgence of Mrs. Grace Sujubo to help us with the presentation. A round of applause for her, please. She's the head media and public relations at NCC. Thank you. After this time out, the representative of the Honorable Minister for Women Affairs, the Impol and Talent, to please get ready to take the stage. appreciation on behalf of the organizers of this event and so women entrepreneurs and executives in tech summit this is a certificate of appreciation presented to dr chioma wachuko in recognition for your support as an influencer at wits dated today the 16th of september 2021 ladies and gentlemen it's my pleasure One more time, have the opportunity to stand before the beautiful Juliet Ehiemwa, she has up, to present this certificate of appreciation on behalf of this, uh, the organizers of this event, in recognition of your support as an influencer at WITS, dated today, 16th September, 2021. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my honor to present this to you now. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you for your time. And of course, Johnny Mercy is back home. A round of applause as they go back to their seats. Please join me to make welcome Kenny Okorafo, representing the Honorable Minister of Women Affairs, the Impolin Talent. Please let's appreciate how she comes to stage. <laughs> Thank you. 
A round of applause for her, please. Thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. I'm sorry, you have to manage me because um, I'm not a speaker. But when you find yourself in this situation, <laughs> you just have to, you know. She will always tell me, the lady that walk our talk, I like to be behind the scene. Okay, thank you so much. My name is Kenda Adelaide Okurafo, the founder of Make Me Elegant Foundation and um, Next Level Hair Manufacturer. So let me quickly deliver my boss message. Sorry. I am honored to deliver this speech on behalf of the Minister of Women Affairs, Her Excellency Dean Portalin. This, is, this means a lot to me. And um, this is a cause that has been card cardinal to the policy agenda of, min of the ministry, promoting inclusion that increases women's participation across all sectors. The future is tech, as we have heard and seen in the past year, and tech no, no gender. We must acknowledge women's contribution, which let me, let me tell you, are quite amazing. Our Nigerian brands, Odu Ewini of Piggy Vest, Damilola Olowo Kesusu of Shelters, Adora Umundu, she's a software engineer at Microsoft, where she builds cloud services and high value experience related to artificial intelligence mixed with reality. She's also the co-founder of Unsac Africa, an open source meetup for software developers. Abiola Eniola Aminu, she's a product designer of at Flutterway. Eniola's journey began in 2017 when she received an email from, from a designer from for three months. Later in 2018, she was at Swift System as, as UX designer. Sadly, there are shocking statistics for women representation in tech across the world. A recent Tech Nation report that looked into diversity in UK, tech companies revealed that 77% of tech director roles are filled up by, women, by men. What are the bottlenecks, the future of tech for women entrepreneurs? According to Women in Technology states for 2020, only 29% of women of service participants haven't worked in companies where there was a boys club. The majority of ladies that have worked in male dominated, dominated environments have felt excluded, unsafe, and uncomfortable. In this regard, we must do more to create a safer space for all women. We must fight microaggression. We must invest in the critical mass of women at, at legislature. We must truly encourage support women in tech. I think I've tried as our own. Let me add my own little way. I've tried, have I not tried? I remember the um, last two years when um, we supported a young lady back from Oman. And um, last year, we have a lot of videos going viral from our girls from Lebanon, from Saudi Arabia, from Afghanistan. You will not ask yourself, what are they doing there? Because in my wildest dream, if I said I want to go abroad, I'm going to UK, America, or Canada. That is what they call abroad. But to some of our young girls, Lebanon, Saudi Arabia, Libya, Afghanistan, is their abroad. Maybe because of the plane. And if they want to enter plane, she will cook buy a ticket to Abuja, enter plane, take pictures, come down. And um, 
With the support of uh, Our Excellency and the owner of FIFA, we try to rescue some of these girls back to Nigeria. And I now found out one thing. Most of them believe that we have a shop we are not selling. We don't even know who to sell to. They forgot one thing that if you have your smartphone, you can sell and make money. I met a young guy, Shola Matthew. That was when she na he now started telling us a lot, a lot about Google, a lot about how you can sell on phone, a lot about how you can advertise your product on Instagram, how you can do Instagram hard and you make your money. And today, we have like three of them that are doing well selling products online. One even bought a land last week. This is a young lady that was stranded in Libya. Sold, you know, in Libya they can either sell you into a uh, uh, procession house, or if you're unfortunate, they will sell you to uh, uh, to woman farm. Woman farm, they will harvest their organ alive and sell. And they are doing well now, selling things online. I give an example one day. There are some things when you see online, when you go to all this China site, it's about 1,000 naira, landing cost to, landing cost to Nigeria about 1,500. And if you know what you are doing, if you invest and buy such at 150, landing cost everything to Nigeria 150, like, the, the Bluetooth I'm using. I bought it already from China. The landing cost there is one, two. And I sold it for 5,000. That means on 100 pieces, I used 120,000, I invested 120. And I make gain of how much? 350 on 120. What am I trying to say? Why are you doing your business? It is not when you have big money you can do business. There's a lot, a lot of, a lot of chances for you selling your things online and you make your money. I want to invite uh, my partner, that is SunTrust Bank, because we have a program for women. We call it Women Empowerment for Self-Sufficiency. I want, I would like to, where is he? Sorry, let's quickly finish our. Let's quickly finish our. What we do is we support women. I know so many women are here. Um, they need support for their business. I'm sure. How many people need support for their business? Don't be shy. Oh. If you need support for your business, don't be shy. Sun Trust Bank is here to support you. We have supported Sunshine. over 500 women. They are here to support you with no interest at all. Let me give you an example. If they give you 100,000, the interest on it every month is 1,470. <laughs> yes. So, he's going to be talking to you, and if you are interested, you can see him. Morning, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. Um, it's a privilege to be in. My name is Francis Usher. I work with the retail team of SunTrust Bank Nigeria. For us at SunTrust Bank, um, our vision is to be the retail bank of choice. As she had said, we have products that are tailored to your needs. We have packages for SMEs, young entrepreneurs. Our interest rates are very, very, very competitive. I am available to take your questions. Products such as our SME financing. For gar gar um, I'll only ask you for one guarantor. And then I want to see the guarantor's account statement to confirm that the guarantor is capable. That it's for one year. The interest rate, like I said, is 16% on reducing balance. You pay me monthly. 
interest in payment. So we have different packages. We have our old overdraft. My time here is very short, so you can see. But I am available. I will drop my cards as well. Anyone can contact me at any time. Thank you very much. Uh, of course, uh, Mr. Francis Uche, SunTrust Bank representative, I've been speaking with you, and their forms will be around. You can see them if you want to get cars, you want to get loans. Here is about enabling women entrepreneurs, and they're here to make life easy. You remember the first speaker spoke to us about how some of the challenges might be that of funds and the rest, and they're here to make life easy. So please, the forms will be going around. You can also meet them outside you know, the hall uh, for some discussions, and you take it a notch further. Thank you very much. Uh, and please extend our warm regards to the Honorable Minister. A round of applause for them one more time. We're moving quickly uh, to the next uh, goodwill message from the MD CEO of Cloudflex. Mr. Adiremi Adejumo has a civil engineering degree from City University London and an MBA from University Université Catholique de Louvain, UCL Belgium. He has more than 30 years experience in technology, having worked in the United Kingdom, France, Belgium, and Switzerland before moving back to Nigeria. He has an extensive experience having worked in a number of blue chip companies, namely NatWest Group, Citibank, UBS AG, K4, IBM, and Compaq. He is a Microsoft certified database expert and an expert in cloud computing. He was responsible for managing and supporting several large enterprise database infrastructures. He was the head of infrastructure and head of admin for EcoBank Nigeria. He implemented a private cloud at EcoBank. He was responsible for the mi migration and integration of the Oceanic Data Center into the EcoBank Data Center, moving over 92 applications seamlessly. He was the chief technology officer for Comasio IAAS and is now the managing director of CloudFlex Computing Services Limited. He is an AWS solutions architect and has written several published articles and is passionate about the development of cloud computing in Nigeria. Please permit me to join to add that he is also a foodie, because I know that personally. A round of applause, ladies and gentlemen, for the CEO of CloudFlex, Mr. Aderemi Adejumo. Hello, sir. What did you have for breakfast today? A meat pie. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Um, I stand on existing protocol. So, uh, it's a pleasure to be here to support the women. Um, I just wanted to make uh, a few comments and also to just emphasize some of the things we've listened to already. Um, I run a company called CloudFlex. Um, CloudFlex is a cloud company. What we do is we provide virtual machines for businesses, um, similar to what AWS and Azure does, but we do that in Nigeria. And I think at this time where the exchange rate is going crazy, you have to change in dollars to, um, you, you know, to get on platforms. With us, you're paying in Naira, and our prices have not changed in the last three years. So we're trying to contribute to the development of Nigeria and to support anybody with ideas, um, apps, and things like that. I think we're the platform for you if um, you need that and I'm um, more than happy to talk to you about it if there's anything you want to know about that. Um, coming to the subject about women in tech, I think um, as I've sat this morning to listen uh, to what has been said, I think I, what struck me is the incredible amount of experience and talent in the women. I think you've met, um, they mentioned a few women, but I'm sure with all the other women in here, I think there's more of a roll call of talent and ability that the women have. And I think it's a shame. Um, I would say that my view, as I look at it, is that um, as a people in Nigeria, we're underperforming. And I think I think about it that if only with the talent we have and with the knowledge, I mean, I think um, Juliet, who's left, mentioned about the fact of um, women, uh, um, you know, the next uh, um, tech giant being a woman, and if you have ideas and things like that. And for me, it's to encourage women that if you have ideas, be bold about it. Talk to somebody about it. Try and find a way through about it. Don't hide it. I think the young lady that uh, played the guitar, I mean, for me, it's just such joy to see such talent in different spheres for us to show the talent. And I think she's incredibly talented. I mean, I'm a guitar player myself. So even as a guitar player, I recognize how good a guitar player, what a beautiful voice she's got. And you know, I, I just think that um, why 
are we not celebrating it more? If we didn't come here today, would we have heard of her? And things like that. But I just hope that we'll see a lot more of the women, a lot more of their talent. And um, I, I commend the um, conveners and organizers of this. And I just uh, um, sort of encourage them and say, well done. And I look to greater and bigger things for what they will do in subsequent years with things like this. And I hope more of this will happen where women are celebrated. And on that note, I saw something and I thought I should read it. Um, and it says, societies that oppress women are far more likely to be violent and unstable. Policymakers who fail to consider the interest of half the population cannot hope to understand the world. And I think it's important, we cannot overemphasize the importance of women. I know it sounds um, strange that women um, celebrating women or women trying to um, you know, talk about women. I think you can see clearly from some of the women that have spoken here today that the glass ceiling is indeed broken. Um, I think if you remember, there was something in the papers uh, a few weeks ago about the number of women uh, bank CEOs that we have in Nigeria today. And I think, you know, congratulations to the women and greater and greater things will we see from the women. And I look forward to that and look forward to supporting that as well. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Digimo. I, I never knew you also played the guitar, so I'll add that next time I'm introducing you. I play the guitar and the saxophone. And the saxophone, interesting. <laughs> Most importantly, he likes to eat burger. <laughs> One more time. All right, let's wrap up with uh, goodwill messages as we have the representative of NITRA. Uh, NITRA is an umbrella body for technology reporters in Nigeria, and um, the president, Mr. Chike, will be rep ably represented by Chidebiri Nwanko, his editor, E Business Life Communications Limited, and the national secretary of NITRA. A round of applause for Chidebiri as he comes on stage. Thank you. Um, I think I'll rightly say good afternoon, all. Oh, still good morning. Okay, good morning, all then. Um, this is a goodwill message, so I guess it should be all right if I simply say, women, well done, okay? Um, but I'll have to say something. Um, I don't have a speech, so I'll just, I'll just say this is, this is a very nice outing, seeing a lot of women, some I know, some I don't, but I've seen the faces of women that are doing things in this country. Um, I can pick them one after the other, but I know that there are a whole lot of them that I still don't know. Um, the title of um, the theme of this um, event is very apt, and I just have a few, sent a, a few statements to make about this. One is to aspiring entrepreneurs, women entrepreneurs. What I will advise, I don't know how many of them are in this house, but don't ever think that opportunities will be handed over to you. You have to seek those opportunities. We heard what, um, what uh, the country, country director of uh, Google, Google said. You have to seek those opportunities and then make something out of, out of them. Then, to entrepreneurs, the ones that have made it, the ones that are, I see most of them in this hall today. I'll tell you that you are all failures. If you don't mentor at least 10 girls to follow suit. If you don't mentor at least 10 girls to follow what you're doing, then you have failed. That's the truth. Okay, because you can be an entrepreneur and you feel, okay, yes, this is you. What if you retire? What happens to the line that you have told? Um, the, the, the likes of Life, Life Bank and, and the rest of them, they have, made, they have made names for themselves. So until they, they train girls just like them to carry on with, from where they stopped, then they have not made an impact. Now, let me, let, me, let me read out these statistics from PwC. It says that as at 20, 2020, December 2020, that 
27% of women would, would or, or just 27% would consider um, a tech career. 27%. As against 62% of the men. And I know it's a 2020 statistics very well. But another thing that caught my attention in, that, um, in, in the data they, they, they issued out was that 16% of women said that somebody somewhere had suggested to them to take a career in ICT. This is as against 33% for men, which basically means it goes back to what I, I just said. Some of the, most of us in the society, both men and women, parents and, uh, and um, you know, uh, uncles and aunties alike, we, don't, we tend to believe that um, tech is just for men. But I believe that between 2020 and now, a whole lot of things have changed. I believe that. So I believe that a lot of people are getting to hear because we at um, eBusiness Life, we have this um, annual event, um, the International Girls in ICT Day. We latch onto ITU's um, event to try to train girls to take up careers in ICT. That is the same thing every one of us should be doing. Let us demystify that thing to them. Let it not seem as if it is a man thing alone. So that is the charge today. You as an entrepreneur, please mentor somebody so that the women folk will be much, the more the merrier in the industry. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Chide Berry, there for that advice. Mentor somebody. If you're here, you don't have a mentor, and you're here with a crop of women in this room, please do not go without holding on to someone's clothes and say, I will never let you go unless you bless me. Uh -huh. Because they say the kingdom of God survives what? And the violence take it by? Are we all violent people? We are violent in the Lord. A round of applause for ourselves. All right, we're going to break it down one more time because we have MC Oba in the building to let's shake it off before we now call on our very first uh, uh, panel discussion. Of course, it's going to be a one man show first and then we go into other discussion. MC Oba in the building, are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? The problem in this country, if you can make us laugh, that means you try. Because sometimes the problem, it is well. A round of applause for comedian MC Oba as he takes the stage. Please start laughing as he's coming. Encourage his ministry. Women supporting men. Please, a round of applause for our MC Oba now. Thank you. Please, let's celebrate ourselves. Let's celebrate our ladies. We are all beautiful. In case I didn't make you laugh. Please, you need to see your pastor because your problem is spiritual. <laughs> okay, thank you for that memory lane you gave us. You made me remember my mom. That's one of those songs that we sang. Okay. There is one particular one. Um, then my mom was cooking and she sent me to go and buy salt outside so that she can use to finish the rice. This song... Um, Chen, 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 fly away. Chen, 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 fly away. Daddy in the parlor watching film. Pa, pa, pa. Mother in the kitchen cooking, cooking rice. rice. Children are outside playing ball. ball. Ta, ta, ta. I say, stop. Change your style. Pa. Change your style. Ah. Another style. Uh, Be like that. Hey. Uh -huh. So I came out to buy the salt. And I saw them playing this game. So I joined. So five minutes, my mother waited for me. She didn't see me. Ten minutes, 15 minutes. She now decided to go and check what is happening. Then I was playing this game. And the person controlling that game saw, me from af saw my mother from afar. And she now pinned me down. Be like that. Be like that. I say be like that. When my mom got there, she gave me a slap that after seven days, the only thing I was hearing was mother in the kitchen cooking rice. Please, once again, let's celebrate our, our ladies. We are all beautiful. And we are talking about tech and 
believe me, even till now, 2020, 2021, there are still some people who can't utilize this tech, especially our phone. I traveled sometime early January, and there is this my auntie. When I was in school, she always promised to send me money, but at the end, she would not. So when I got home, I realized that she was not on Facebook. And I asked her, auntie, okay, I was doing something, and she was asking me, why am I seeing pictures of people in my phone? I said, auntie, this is Facebook. She said, which one is Facebook? And she was using a smartphone. I said, oh, auntie, you are not on Facebook. She said, please, I would like to join. I said, okay, auntie, it's just a little thing for you to join. The name Facebook, you have to just pay. If, and if you want to have only the face, it's 20,000. Then if you want to have both the Facebook, the book aspect of it is like a manual that you use to read and know what is happening on the face, which is 10,000. But if you want to have only the face, you'll just be seeing faces of people without knowing their names. But with the book, you will know who is that. She now said, okay, no problem, my child. I'm tearing this thing on my phone. So finally, she gave me 20,000 first, that after she will complete it, the remaining 10,000. Uh -huh. Sarah money. I collected. Then in the process, I was still registering mommy, and I was showing her, mommy, with this Facebook, you can be able to connect with all your classmates in secondary school, in primary school. She was shouting, full of joy. Then immediately, I registered that. She started seeing pictures of people she may know. And I was like, mommy, can you see this one? He said, eh? This was our class prefect in primary two. Please, my son, give me more. Then after that, she was very happy that she had been added to Facebook. Then I now told her, mom is remaining one thing, no. She said what? The monthly dues. <laughs> that mommy, without the monthly dues, every month is only people you have now, you will not have more. He said, no, but she wants every month, she will be seeing new people. I said, okay, mommy, it's not much. Like every month, it's just to 2,000 Naira. And if she pay like six months or one year together, they will give her this discount because I wanted to collect everything at once. <laughs> she said, my son, I, I can only pay for six months. That after the six months, she will now call her son. She will not call her son <laughs> to transfer the remaining to me. I said, mommy, don't please don't involve your son. Don't worry because I know, Yawa go gas. <laughs> <laughs> A round of applause for MC Yoba for that. Okay. So... Immediately she uh, transferred the, the 12K for the six months. She was very happy. I said, mommy, you have six, half year subscription. I traveled back to Lagos after one week. All her six sons, you are calling me. <laughs> <laughs> and the two of them are in the army. <laughs> Do you know what happened next? Do you know what happened next? You survived it. No, don't worry. When I come back on stage, I will finish the story. Please, let's put our hands together. A round of applause for MC Yoba. At least we are sure of what happened. You did not die. You are here. A round of applause for him for that. Some of us still do that till tomorrow, eh? You know, even our parents now, they are now smart. You send them money to repair house. They will not do it. When you come, you now say, you think I don't remember when you'll be telling me to pay money for micro and biology. It is now our turn to pay for double. A round of applause for MC Yoba one more time. All right, we're going to move quickly, but before then, talking about, can I have just um, one more random memories before we go? So for those of you that were forming, we know it. I'm going to come to that table. We have some proud old school there. Are you ready? This time around, it was from the popular Coca-Cola. How many of you know this one? How many of you know this one? Let's start with the lyrics. Are you ready? One to go. Whenever there is a pool, there's always a flood. Whenever there's a school that'll always be hard. Whenever there's a beat, there's always a drum. Whenever there's fun, there's always coca cola Oh yeah, come in. Ta da 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 Oh yeah. Ta da 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 Verse two. Take it up. Keep humming. Ta da 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 Stop. 
As long as that's far as always the reason colour is always the one never um hey, never plus some of you are just drinking coke, you don't even know the first first one. Eh? How many of you know the second one? I'm the future of the world. I'm not going to give you lyrics. Let's sing it together. I want to go. I am the future of the world. I am the hope of my See? And we have a song to sing to you. A message to bring to you. Hey, while I did. Applause. It's okay. Take it away. Take it away. A round of applause for yourself. It shows that you are all watching NTA. NTA that year. Thank you. Now all of you are on Facebook and Instagram guesses. A round of applause for yourselves. Thank you very much. After this time, we are going to go local. Let's know those that really go local. But ladies and gentlemen, we are moving quickly to our first um, panel discussion. Quickly. We're talking about the first topic that is taking the front seat in technology entrepreneurship through STEM. And our guest, Confident Stavli, is a cybersecurity professional, a cybersecurity awareness advocate, and a global shaper, author, and entrepreneur with over a decade experience in technology. Her wealth of experience garnered across diverse sectors, including consulting, education, banking, and government, has distinguished her as a leading female voice in the African technological space. Confidence has achieved numerous professional certifications and industry recognitions. She is a Cybersecurity Woman of the Year 2021 finalist, IFSEC Global Top Influencer in Security and FIRE 2021, Top 50 Women in Cybersecurity Africa 2020, Young CISO of the Year Award 2021 winner, and an external faculty of the FinTech Institute, Lagos, London, and Toronto as acknowledgement of her professionalism and expertise within the African continent and globally. Guests, ladies and gentlemen, please join me to make welcome Confident Stavli as she takes us through how we can take the front seat in technology entrepreneurship through STEM. Please appreciate her as she comes on stage. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. It's a pleasure and an honor um, to be here today to speak about something I'm very passionate about and to be in the gathering of women who are entrepreneurs and executives as well. Um, so I'm going to be speaking about taking the front row seat, but I want this to be a bit more interactive. What does front row seat mean to you? Can we have the mic just um, go around? What does it mean? What does the front row seat look like for you? What does it mean for you? Anyone wants to share? Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Good morning, everybody, or good afternoon. In two words, the front row seat means Silicon Valley. OK, excellent. So Silicon Valley is our front row seat. Uh, fantastic. Anyone else wants to contribute to taking the front row seat, what it means? For her, it's global, it's the top, it's um, in tech, it's in the foremost, one of the foremost places, you know, um, to be a tech person. Well, who else has an uh, another idea of a front row seat? I know my mother, my mother's front row seat was uh, being able to sell uh, groundnuts and um, palm oil to ensure that she's able to pay for me to um, get education. I, I got my first degree from the University of Middlesex from starting off from, there, from, from that background. Um, I got scholarships later on, but it was from Groundnuts. I still Groundnuts quite well right now, even, even now, uh, because of that background. But that was her front row seat, seeing that her children had the best of education uh, when we were from very poor backgrounds. Um, I speak eloquently today because of her sacrifice, and I don't take it for granted. But that is her front row seat. 
Um, please, anybody else has another idea what their front row seat is? Thank you. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Good morning. Front row seat. Okay, front row seat means being a pioneer. Being a pioneer, being innovative. Okay. Thank you. I like those words. Those words are very strong. Being a pioneer, being very strongly connected to what I'd like to say today. Um, we had have, we have one more hand here, please. The beautiful lady over there. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Polake Laude. Uh, what's a uh, uh, front row seat? Front, uh, front row seat In entrepreneurship. Means being at the top of your game. Thank you so much. I, I think they all have that thing in common for the three front row seats, being at the top of your game. And I just wanted to sh demonstrate to us that front row seat um, can vary for different people based on what your priorities are and what is important to you in entrepreneurship. But today I am here to charge you that whatever your front row seat is, is possible. For my mother, her front row seat was making sure her children had great education. I graduated with the first class um, studying IT management from the University of Middlesex. I got another scholarship and graduated with a distinction at the University of Bradford from a woman who sold groundnuts and frozen water. And that was her front row seat till today. So whatever your front row seat is, my charge is that you take it on and you push it and you push the boundaries until you achieve it because it's possible. Um, I also want to share a little story it's about a little boy, um, but yeah, we can also apply it. Um, and, and sometimes, I'm sharing this story because as women, um, I'm married today, sorry, my ring does no longer fits. I've put on some weight recently, so my ring no longer fits. But I'm married with, um, I'm married with a son today, and um, I, I've, beg I've begun to see some, some of the things my mother experienced. Um, and also as an entrepreneur, so we share that in common as well. We build, we're building a family, and of course, we are also into, I'm also an entrepreneur. And this story I'm going to share is in the Bible, but it's one I find very fascinating. There was a little boy who was a shepherd. He had, um, one day he was out with his sheep, all right, yeah, and, um, you know, a lion came and uh, attacked him, and he killed the lion with his bare hands. He wrote it down somewhere. He also had, some other day, maybe two months later, he had a bear attack him, and he killed the bear with his bare hands. He wrote it down somewhere. But what he may not have realized is that God was building a city for him. There will come a time where the bonus he gained, where the test of his, of his physical strength will be, be brought to bear, where his ability to bring down something really huge will be needed in his whole community, where that particular ability will be the reason why God will be exalted where he was, be, where those skills he gained will come in very strongly. And I'm saying this because as entrepreneurs, we should remember that first and foremost, we are solving problems. But the problems that you may have or you may try to solve may not be problems that fall from the sky. May not be one you sit down in the corner ideating. May not be one you sit down in the boardroom and begin to uh, um, brainstorm. There may be challenges you are facing in your own life. There may be challenges people around you are facing and you have noticed. And when you are able to solve that problem, remember that there are many more people that need solutions to those problems. And you were called for such a time as this to be an entrepreneur, not to solve those problems, not necessarily to make money. Making money will come out of the value that definitely comes from solving those problems. And I want to just remind you, because there may be something, some challenge around you that, you know, will be inspiring and has been calling out to you. Some experiences you've had that life has thrown at you. It's not just because God wants to be tough on you. Or it's not just because the universe is working, you know, to make things difficult for you. But in that difficulty, have you thought about it that maybe there's a solution? Maybe being able to solve this problem is something I can scale for more people. Again, I will bring my personal experience. Um, my chairman is sitting over there, Dr. Badere. I greet you, sir. Uh, but I'm the founder of CyberSafe Foundation. And what we literally, literally do is we, um, we enable safety across Africa for people using the internet. And we do this quite through a number of initiatives. One of them is No Go For Maga. Now, No Go For Maga, the whole idea behind No Go For Maga was because my mother, also, my mother in love here became um, a, a, a victim of cybercrime. 
And after that experience, I knew I didn't want more people to face that. And so I started off a campaign driving awareness about cybercrime. So it has hit home. But that was something that happened close to me that could have passed. Okay? It could just have passed. But right now, it's helping people across Nigeria. We're scaling out to other parts of Africa. Right now, we are training over 100 girls across Nigeria, in six states in Nigeria, to gain cybersecurity skills. And I'm sharing all of this because, again, I want to open your eyes to the fact that the challenges, every day, the experiences you go through, the things you do, are a call for you to realize that these problems are to be solved. And you are the best person to solve it because you've experienced it. And I also want to bring your attention to the fact that you know that women are natural born entrepreneurs. Women are excellent planners. Sometimes my husband looks at me and like, this woman, you always have a plan, like you have it detailed down to the T, down to how you shop. It's very detailed. And if you don't understand how I'm able to do that, but I don't also understand. I am intuitively this person. I'm a planner. Okay, and I'm sure a lot of women here, you know what, the, in fact, you're sitting down here, maybe thinking, what would, what would I cook for my children the next day? It, it, you're planning. That's something that, generally speaking, doesn't come to men. Women are natural savers. Women are intuitive. They are multitaskers. These are all skills that are fantastic for an entrepreneur. So why are you not taking the front row seat? And I've come to ask you that question. Because again, the front row seat in STEM uh, depends on all of us, depends on different factors that are personal to you. But then, uh, why are you not taking the front row seat? Now, why is it important that you take the front row seat? The first key thing is that you will attract and inspire more women. I can't count how many girls have gone into cybersecurity since they saw me. I can't count. I've lost count. The ones that have mentored, the ones that have handheld, the ones that have helped, the ones that just existing has made them start a career and shown them that it is possible. I want to remind you that every single time you just exist as a woman doing amazing stuff, it's not for you alone. It's not for your family. It's for a, your whole generation and the generation after you. Until we are able to take the front row seat, be seen, be visible, we will not be able to have this ripple impact that not just our family will be able to benefit from. Right now, my impact is not just to make sure that my son always looks good, dresses well, and is very courteous. Um, and also ensure that my husband is well fed and around. That is not just my impact. It's fantastic, I'm very proud of it. But my impact just by existing is helping young girls um, see that what they thought was a man's, or, you know, a male only field is also possible for women to ex uh, explore. Um, and I also want to remind you that taking the front row seat will also drive policy that favors you. I'll share something very personal as well. I had a very, very, um, challenging pregnancy um, for my first son. And one of the, the most challenging things around that was I was, I was put on, I was put on a, a regimen to ensure that I don't stress myself. And um, at that time where I worked, if my boss was not female and understood the doctor's report and everything I shown, she wouldn't have been able to maximize my skill set at that time. You will not believe it that that was the first time I was able to work from home half of the time. So I was, I was working four hours in the office and working from home. And I was way more productive. I was way more productive. That was, now when everybody's seen that ah, working from home can be more productive, I was way more productive. And then, but you see, that whole experience taught me that women need to rise for other women. Women need to rise to be able to contribute to policy because men may not necessarily understand certain things. And it's not, doesn't, you know, a lot of, you know, a lot of men now have, um, are not able to relate with the things that we are saying because, you know, they have daughters, they're seeing these things happen around them, but it may not come to them naturally to understand. Okay, so we need more women in those places of policy as well to really, really help with these things. Also, there has never been a time in our history when value of our human energy and our power to, to imagine and create has been more important. There are too many problems to solve. And STEM and entrepreneurship are two Siamese twins that can go very hand in hand to solve these problems. You've seen the stories of Miss um, um, uh, Tubosu over there, who is now saving lives with her medical supplies. If you ask her, maybe she's had a personal experience, you know, where somebody has died around her, possibly because there was no blood. You know, so it's important that we use those two tools and we take the front row seat, being very clearly visible and solving these problems. STEM skills can also help you scale your business and make it global. Um, we, s we heard uh, Juli uh, Juliet also speak here from Google, saying, you know, how um, using STEM has broken down 
um, geographical boundaries, you know, around business. And right now, clients can be just about anywhere in the world. It's also important that you use STEM to scale your business. The moonshot thinking she was talking about, the 10, uh, 10x thinking, all of it is only made possible by STEM, and that's why you should seize it. I know my time is really short, and I'll be rounding off right now. I know you're enjoying the talk, but I need to go so other people can talk. <laughs> uh, but um, the front row seat, the front row seat involves converting your challenges and experiences to solutions. It involves taking room. There's nothing wrong. Yes, we are modest as women. We want to be, you know, a lot of our cultural influences are having, you know, we want to, but yes, you have to take up room. Take the seat. It is yours and you're only in that place because of value. If you were not valuable, you will not be in that place. So when you're in those places, take up room. I also want to throw it out here that you should throw the rope down and build a younger generation of leaders. The truth is, I don't consider myself a leader until I'm able to build people like me, even greater than me. That is the only time I consider myself a leader. What is leadership without impact? What is leadership without growing someone else? And so I, I also urge us that in our busy schedule, it's not easy running a family, running your career, but in that time, please prioritize mentorship. I like that. Um, the person that spoke before me also pulled that up. It's important that we mentor women. Um, the program I currently run, uh, we have mentors in 13 countries across three con continents. And some girls in far away Calabar paired with somebody in South Africa, somebody in New York, you know, being men mentoring them, somebody in Spain mentoring them. What it's doing for them is it's showing them that this is possible and it's showing them opening up their minds to global opportunities. And the fact that you can do this, and many of these women that they are mentoring, or are being men uh, men uh, the mentors are actually doing all of these things. So it's important that you find the time to groom somebody, to grow somebody, to hold the hand of somebody, to throw the rope down, no matter what it is. It might not be with your time. It may also be with, when you see women initiatives, what do you do to support them? And the last thing, because I can see my sister here, you know, she's already getting busy around me. It's all a sign, and I get it. <laughs> Um, the last point I want to say is you should show up and be known. Somebody had mentioned around personal brand. Um, if I asked um, anybody who knows me personally here what they know me for, I'm sure they can tell you that very easily. But I'm not going to bore you with that bit. I just want to remind you that while you're doing great work, even the Bible says you shouldn't light a, a light and put it under. He uh -huh. said what should you do to it? You should put it on top. That, that is a basic principle. Why will you be doing amazing things and hiding it? That is what STEM, that's what social media can do for you. Use these platforms and talk about the work you're doing. Connect with like-minded people. Meet new people. Today I've met amazing people and I'm sure uh, there are already great opportunities you're thinking about with Cloudflex, you know. And um, these are all opportunities that are made possible because I'm in this room and I'm meeting other people. So it's important that we, we brand ourselves as solution providers in the space we're working in and also network with other like-minded people. I hope I've been able to contribute a thing or two about taking the front row seat, and I'll see you all at the front row. Thank you very much. You almost sounded like, hope I've been able to confuse her, not to confuse you. <laughs> that teacher is better than doctor. Thank you. A round of applause for Confidence Stavely one more time. Always a pleasure to listen to you and all of the good things you're doing with the girls. Keep it up. Keep it up. More computers in your ministry in Jesus' name. <laughs> A round of applause for her one more time. Nice. Talking about meeting people. Please, I want to meet people too, and I want you to meet me. Let's meet ourselves. Uh -huh. Let me start by giving you my phone number in case. I'm an MC. I'm also a reporter. Uh, we need to blow in this industry together. Please, on a call, Roger. 080, please bring out your phone. Thank you very much, whatever you are. They say we should shoot our shots. I want to shoot it now and score. Are you with your biro? 080-556-TRI-TRI. 726. I'll take it one more time. 080 556 Tiri Tiri 726. Thank you very much. Hope I've been able to confuse and not to confuse you that I can anchor your next event. Thank you. A round of applause for me now. Uh -uh. Up next on our program, we're, re we're really trying to beat time. The program here says 1.30. Let's see how fast we can go and we're really doing good with the timing. Uh, up next to talk about cybercrime converting suspects to tech giants is none other than Dr. Obadari Peter Adewale. He's the co-founder and the chief operating officer of Digital Encode Limited. 
Peter is arguably the most credentialed Pan-African Cybersecurity and GRC thought leader, a fellow British Computer Society, FBCS, a fellow Institute of Management Consultant, FIMC, fellow Institute of Information Management, FIIM, fellow Enterprise Security Risk Management, FESRM, a fellow Institute of Brand Management, FIBM, and Chartered Information Technology Professional, CITP, the first PECB Certified Data Protection Officer in Nigeria, the first Egg Council Licensed Penetration Tesla in Africa, the first EC Council Certified Blockchain in Africa, second COVID-5 Certified Assessor in Africa, Payment Card Industry Data Security Standard Qualified Security Assessor. He is a seasoned cybersecurity expert and GRC techpreneur with over 50 international professional certifications to his credit. Mr. Obadari Peter Adewale. <laughs> Permit me to ask that those in the streets, we are on a day this school. <laughs> yes, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, so I know there's no time. I'll be very fast. Okay, so uh, don't mind me. I always carry my laptop everywhere because the last time I went to a conference. I didn't know, you know I'm talking about cybercrime. The cyber criminals actually followed me and they stole my laptop. <laughs> and unfortunately, <laughs> I'm telling you a true life story. Unfortunately, the Five Star Hotel, when we asked them to play back um, CCTV, that was when we discovered that the CCTV in the room wasn't working. So, yes, yeah, so don't mind me. So I like to see my laptop. <laughs> <laughs> No, they said once beating. All right, so uh, I'll be very fast. I'm very glad to be here, and I'm standing on the exist protocol. Uh, it was a great presentation by my sister. So uh, I actually pride myself to say I, I always support women, you know, uh, because not many men feel comfortable supporting women. I started with my wife. Yeah, so yeah, I'm going to start with a very quick story uh, about 10 years ago, uh, my wife, she's a trained accountant. You understand? And she was honey, I look at her salary. That time, she was 38 years old. You can imagine. At 38, and I called her, I said, see, the way you're going, that was 10 years ago. That, um, yeah, accounting is, please permit me, accounting is a great profession, so that I don't get misquoted, all right? You know, but I said, see, the way technology is going, this is your salary that you will make in, in 10 years. You can make it in one month. And I asked her to resign. To cut the long story short, today she resigned. I gave her one book uh, in technology. She read it. Today she has over 15 professional certifications. And my wife is actually the acting CRO of the Nigerian Stock Exchange. So, yes, from accounting to, you know, so. Uh, I believe there are so many things women can do, and they can actually do it better than men. That's the honest truth. So I'm not going to go with that. And next, next story I wanted to give you quickly is, I think most of the time we don't communicate uh, the message well to women. Uh, apologies, maybe because we're not showing the women where the money is. Is that correct? You know, yes, the story of those girls is the way, I think is the mindset of how they have schooled the girls. Because most of the time, uh, they've schooled girls to say, you are just a taker, and boys are givers. You understand? That's why those girls can be going to Libya, they can be going to all those Uh, we got connected, we're always talking, and uh, I told her about, you know, she's always like, so what do you do? I told her, you know, don't forget I've mentored my wife. I always like to share my story with women. And I told her, and she got interested in technology. In fact, one of the toughest technologies around, blockchain. And we started talking about blockchain, right? Before I knew what was happening three years ago, you know, but guess what? She started 
to do more research on the blockchain, the cryptocurrency, and everything. Because sometimes, you know, don't forget, I'm talking about maybe it's the way the women have been, uh, they've been schooled, that they are, you know, so, because sometimes uh, our, the women dream is, oh, I want to give back to children, train them at the end of the day. The long time dream is what? I want to go and do Omugo. Is that correct? <laughs> but on my own, my message for you, don't worry, today is you can actually do Omugo with style. Because when you have your money, to call that long story short, that woman got interested in blockchain, technology, cryptocurrency, and um, if I tell you the numbers, just about three months ago, she made one billion era doing cryptocurrency. Yes, learning, you know, is they, just because there is no time, there's so many things to learn in technology. So the question is, how many granots will you sell to make one billionaire? Technology is a leveler. And I'm saying a woman. Let me not, no, I'm not talking about men. I'm saying I know a lot of amazing women. So today, um, please, uh, my slide, can you please go to the beginning? I'm going to be talking about the topic I've been giving about is how... Um, Cybercrime, and as women, we're going to be looking at the pros and cons, the good, the bad, and the ugly. What are the, the you know, the bad side of cyber security? Please, next, 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 next. Okay, yes. Hold on. All right. So, um, today, interestingly, with what we have in our hands, somebody has said about our mobile phone. You can see this is an event in the world. You know, uh, two events in the world. You can see in 2005, um, in that event, people were very, there is decorum. Decorum because uh, the proliferation of mobile phone was still very at its infancy. But by 2013, you can see everywhere, that was actually a church event. Please, next slide, please. So you can see, next slide. So the first one, no, 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 go back to that slide. So the first one was the Pope Benedict inauguration in 2005. You can see, and then, but right now, digitization has actually taken over the world. What we have today, the phone, this particular phone, interestingly, with a lot of us, if I ask you now, do you have a computer? Most of us might say, no, I don't have. But you do, because this phone that you have in your hand, I'll give you a story of 2005. In fact, in 2005, I bought a computer, an IBM ThinkPad. Guess the memory of that system. It was one gigram. I was the biggest boy in around the area. You know why? Because sincerely, for people that started computer heli, you can count how many number of computer system that has one gig RAM that year, honestly. So, but today, this phone that you have in your hand, the memory, some of them has two gig memory, some of them have four gig memory, some of them have, so what am I trying to say in essence is you are carrying big computer that can change your life in your hand. All right. So, but then, because of the consumerization of uh, IT, there are inherent risks, you know, there are, you know, dangers that comes with the usage of technology as well. It's like when you have a car, a car is to aid mobility. But then, if due care, uh, you know, the writing is not done, that same car, if you don't service it very well, what happens? You, can, you know, there can be an accident and, you know, what have you. So, the same way, next place. Next, next place, next. So let's talk about the risk. Hello, hold on. So now, because, no, 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 go back to that. Is there a clicker so that I can control it myself? It's okay. So now, uh, COVID-19 came, disrupted everybody, but I can tell you from this occasion today, this event, that the next global crisis is going to be a cyber pandemic. You know, what we faced was a biological pandemic. It's affecting the human being. But right now, the next thing, big thing that will happen to the world is going to be, a, you know, the next global crisis is cyber pandemic. What does that mean? Because of the way technology is changing our lives. Now we're talking about cloud computing. You know, thank God for the likes of CloudFlex. You know, all of those things that we're doing. But the reality is, if you do not do the right thing, and those right things are actually basic things, most of us have all our phones. You just go to slots. They sell a phone to you. They will tell you they will give you antivirus. And they say, ah, bring 2,000 error. They will install antivirus. You know, all those. But the reality is, if you don't have 
a paid licensed antivirus, you are putting yourself at a risk. And you, you know, and unfortunately for a lot of people, most of the, in fact, your phone is being used as what is called a botnet. What's a botnet? Don't forget you're always on the internet. If your system is not secure, that's your phone. Don't forget when I'm referring to system now, I'm referring to your phone, not your computer at home, because that phone in your hand is a computer. So if you botnet means if your system is vulnerable, they, they, the, the bad guys, right, can use your system to be committing, you know, uh, illegal activities over the internet. And then, let me ask us this question. How many of us are connected to the Wi-Fi in this place? Are we connected? It's not working. It's not working. It's because time doesn't permit me. If you connect to public Wi-Fi, you see, say that a wolf runs belly. See, let me not lie to you. Oftentimes, you wonder, those guys who send you an email, your something, your bank is, your account is, is because you have connected to so many public Wi-Fi. I will have shown you practically, but there is no time. Maybe if there's another event to show us so that we can put a picture to all of these things. Somebody, most of those guys, they come to events like this, just like they are targeting to steal our laptops, you know. <laughs> they, they are connecting to make sure they capture our username and password as well. Which is why, do, you know, if you, all your social media account, hello, all your social media account, if you um, only have username and password and you don't have two-factor authentication, what do I mean by two-factor authentication? It means that password is not enough. Your username and password on your WhatsApp, on your Instagram, Facebook, if you go to settings, it will ask you to enable two-factor, multiple factor, which means that beyond your password, there is another layer of what? Of security. If you don't do all of those things and you are connected to any public Wi-Fi, don't worry. We'll do a small test to know whether you have been digitally invaded. Any or you are, you know, some people they don't, you know, sometimes they said spiritual issues. There are digital issues too. A lot of people are working digitally, they have been invaded. As the way they use spiritual remote control to control people. You understand? And we're going to see next, please. It, and the reason is because of those practices. Next. Now, let me show all these um, statistics. So that you don't think that maybe this is just um, the next, when I said that the next global crisis is going to be a cyber pandemic. The biggest economy right now is US, right? And then followed by China. But guess to what the next biggest economy? It is a cyber crime. Because by this year, the world is going to lose, you know, according to this research work by um, cyber security ventures. Please, for reporters that are here, if you don't want cyber security ventures to go after you, because I said this some times ago in a conference, and uh, somebody reported me and did not quote cyber security ventures. They followed that man, or even from New York. So please, if you are quoting this, the, the research work is by cybersecurity ventures, okay? That um, cybercrime is going to cost the world over $10.5 trillion. Yes. So what does that mean? It's me and you that we are responsible. Some guys, next slide, please. Let me show you what some guys are doing. Just the same way, you know, um, um, Confidence has talked about, you know, taking the front row by what? By technology. A lot of speakers today, do you know what some guys do? All their own thinking is, how do we take the front row by cybercrime? Because they have seen $10.5 trillion, right? They don't want to, so they are after that $10.5 trillion. And you are an enabler for them to take that money if you are not doing the right thing. And those basic things, you are not doing two-factor authentication, you don't have an antivirus. Do you understand? Those basic cybersecurity like gym practices is going to hate this temple, you know, so you can see they are telling themselves it is time for us to, to reinvent the wheel. So, because the next type of criminals are what? They are digital thieves and digital criminals. Honestly, and you cannot, it's a state of mind. You cannot change it because what they are after is what? It's the money. The next slide, please. Next, next, next. So, and those guys are those guys that you know. Yes, you might call them Yahoo, Yahoo. You might call them all sort of names, you know, boys. You can see. No, 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 please, that first slide is very important to me. Uh, no, 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 yes, yes. You can even see, unfortunately, even Forbes, in no costly, 
this guy in Victor's will be very fantastic guy. You will see, you understand. Unfortunately, they never knew he was a cyber criminal. And what was yes, they even profiled him under um, uh, Forbes under 3030. Yes, to be honest. And you can see in the news now, most of those guys, SA to Ogun State Governor, SA to this governor, all of them are Yahoo, Yahoo. They are doing yes. They are doing identity theft. You understand? It's not that it's that sophisticated, but it is because when we come to events like this, and because, you know, some of us even say, oh, thank you, Jesus. And some people even because if they are Muslim, ha, Allah, you know, whatever, and they will sh sh um, shut down their mobile data. Ah, and say, make I save my mobile data and connect to public Wi-Fi. Unfortunately, by connecting to that public Wi-Fi, <laughs> The 500 MB or 500 Naira or 1,000 Naira that you want to see, save that is free can actually expose you to lose. See, let me not lie to you. I can, we're going to do a test. I can tell you in this room, 80% of everybody in this room, they have been digitally invaded. We're going to do the test. Don't worry. Let us not argue. The only reason why you have not really, you know, there are two types of alerts. There is alarm and there is alert. Alert is when you do normal transaction and you can view it by yourself. But alarm <laughs> is when those boys, they, you get an alert from them. It's an alarm. The reason why you have not received the alarm is maybe they are still checking that uh, you are checking your balances is 500 naira, 1,000. But they are reading your mails the day maybe your uncle or your brother or your cousin or nephew. Will now, that's why you see stories that I just got this money from my uncle in London. Maybe that day, that's when they know that, ha, 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 it is time for you to get the alarm. And they will wipe out those because they are reading your mails. Exactly. Don't worry, we're going to see it. So, see all these guys. They are guys that we know. They are not spirit. Next slide, please. Next slide. You can see, hush puppy. <laughs> you know, all these guys, you know, they are all over. There are people that we know. The next place. Uh, and then, I don't want us to leave this to think that is all about Nigerians. No, 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 no. Cyber crime is a global, you see, is a global, is a global crime. So please don't let anybody deceive you. Don't let even the whites too, because the whites make us feel Nigerian prince. They are Yahoo Yahoo too. They have Yahoo Yahoo. So when I go to America, I tell them, you call us Yahoo Yahoo, you are all Yahoo Yahoo. See, they are all there. See, this guy, Alban Gozaliz, was just their own, like their own hush puppy. This guy was buying different cars. He broke into Atlas Payment System, a company like Interswitch. But you know the white people likes to flaunt the black people as if we're the one. They have their own. So please, so I want to balance this knowledge. You can see Alban Gonzalez. So when you see a white man, say we are Yahoo Yahoo, tell them too. There is Alban Gonzalez. Go, I mean, Albert. Yeah, next one. There is this guy, Mafia Ball. You know, there's so many of them as white people too. So please, don't think it's all about. And next, please. Next. Now, this is where I'm going. You can see. See that fine girl. You know, sexy, right? Don't think that only men, they do this, you know. Even women, they run things. Just like confidence is doing her own positively. And so many great women that are women. See this girl, Krishna. You can see. In fact, she stole over $35 million. Ah, so women, they run things too. Yes. As bad guys, cyber criminals. So, but what is the message? He's just showing the ladies too that if, you know, if you, that means there's so many, you can do it positively as well. Next, please. There is no time. You can see Anna Chapman too. Russia Naka. Also, so you can now see that, yes, okay, next, 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 next. So there's so many attacks. There is no time. There is phishing. There are so many things that can make you to be digitally invaded. All right? All of these. Next, next. You know, next play. Now, this is the test. They are already saying that time has gone. So now, how do you know? You go to, if you can go quickly on your phone and just check, have I been pawned? Please look at, have I been pawned? If you want to test whether someone here, somewhere is reading your mail, just check, have I been pawned? If it shows you red, you will just say, oh no, you have been pawned. It means someone somewhere is reading your mails. What do you need to do? Don't, yes, just, yes, have I been pawned? Have I been pawned? No, 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 just type your, if, if you go to this website and put your email address, just your email address, so your, if your email address is wale, the, the website is have I been pawned? 
have high H A V E high B B W E N P W N E D dot com. If it shows you, so don't put your password or just your if your name if your um password I mean I mean um address is wale at yahoo.com just put it there and click pond if it shows it shows you no oh no I, I know it will show don't worry we know you know i've said it i've prophesied it before that everybody in this room i can tell you 80 percent yes so because exactly five times so if you can check this i'm rounding up but what am i trying to say don't panic all do you need to do at the basic level hello at the basic level, just change your what? Change your password. If you are using Gmail, your Facebook, just go to settings. Go to security. You can enable, after changing your password, then you can enable two-factor authentication. On your WhatsApp too. Not just on, on WhatsApp, on all of those platforms. Your LinkedIn. Next, next, I'm rounding up. I'm rounding up. Okay. Uh, there, there are plethora of opportunities beyond those Yahoo Yahoo guys. For women in this house. I don't need to say too much. You can see the example of um, uh, confidence. Maybe the only part confident doesn't, you know, because you know most women are. You should, you should show them the money. She, you know, because of um, all the things she's doing globally. Now, if, do you know what it is to get money for from a UK government? Do you? Know it's easy to get money from UK government. Even Nigerian government, they have to write proposals. But today, confident that she's sitting here. You know, because of our knowledge in cybersecurity, get funding from the UK government. Do you understand? So it shows that there are opportunities in cybersecurity. So if you are here, so there are, in, you know, next place, next. So you can create cybersecurity entrepreneurs and professionals. All of, so because the global, hello, the global cybersecurity market is huge. Hello. The global cybersecurity ma market is huge. By 2026, the world is going to spend over $270 billion in that area. Which, you understand? So that means there's a lot of money. So you can become a professional, you can become, you understand? So everybody will need cybersecurity. Next, please. Everybody will need cybersecurity. Uh, next, next, next. There's no time. So you can see, you can sell cybersecurity technology solutions. You can set up cybersecurity operation centers. You understand? And don't forget, it's not a cost. We are, some of us have been saying this, and a lot of people of you in this room too. You all know, Naira, Nigeria is not doing anything. The only thing we can export to the world, you want to hear the truth, you can be in the comfort of your house and be handing dollars. I'm not talking about even Forex. I'm not even talking about crypto. I'm talking about your intellectual properties. Sometimes I weep when I'm driving and I see that God she just opened all Nigerians. I was telling a friend of mine, a very big banker, I said, guy, with all these things you have done, go and do, you can become international auditors. He was sending me, I, I, you know, just because there's no time, he, he was shocked and he was like, Wale, and was praying that thank you for opening my eyes. He now, he's doing an audit now. He's still working in the bank, but he's doing, because he has done some exams, that qualify him to become an international auditor and power audit. In fact, in a month now, if I is any in dollars, and when you transfer, I mean, multiply it, it's about almost two million naira extra money that he makes every month just because of what intellectual property. And I can tell you, so many people, I won't lie to you. And for women, believe me, I think it's time to change our. Okay, yes. Uh, final roundup. Don't worry. Next. Uh, there's so many technology solutions, all of these things. No, next, next, next. Don't worry. Don't worry. Next, next. So, hello. You can see the opportunity. Let me show you. Like, no, no, no. Go back to that last. Yes. Uh, capacity building is the only way for women. The world needs over 4 million more cybersecurity workers. All right. You can see it's huge all over the world. And they, because look at what, why, that's why intellectual properties. It pays any time. Now, next, the last slide. Look at this as I round up. There was this question, uh, who is running the world? You know, the U.S. president, China, all of them were in the room. And they faced Trump, Putin, and the, you know, who is in charge of the world? U.S., Russia, or China? But guess what the president of India said? I, I'm, I'm trying to emphasize intellectual property, how it can change women's lives. 
beyond just cooking for our husband, beyond taking care of our children. You can do all of those things. You want me to tell you the truth? That woman that made one billion, just that, <laughs> and I'm not lying to you now, she has bought a property in Ekoina. Now, she's investing the money. She's into real estate now. She has two maids now. So, all those stories. So, it's not about, it is about using, but she made that money from where? Intellectual property. So don't, instead of just be washing in the kitchen and you are sweating and you are sweating and you are, ah, I say you go better, you go better and you sing and sing and sing. Ah, it, intellectually you can make money that will make life because look at what and that is what is happening to India today. Look at what he's saying without any conclusion. I'm right. Don't worry. Uh, next, please. Look at what Modi replied. The CEO of Google is what India. The CEO of Microsoft India. CEO of Citigroup. India, SoftBank Vision in CEO, Adobe, all of those CEOs all over the world are what? And they got there by what? Intellectual property. It's not by five. So what am I trying to say? I'm going to leave you with this. For women in this house, you can rule the world by your intellectual property. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Peter or Badari for that very interesting one. I, I can remember vividly when that happened. Uh, I was at that event when imagine the person teaching us how not to be scammed was scammed in the event. It was really a terrible one, but at least he has learned. Evert, <laughs> thank you very much for that. And uh, for, for us, most of us, we just knew that um, most of us here have been pawned. And um, he also made mention of the fact that women also are Yahoo girls. I mean, it doesn't sound, Yahoo boys sounds more appropriate, right? <laughs> Yahoo girls doesn't sound, uh, yeah. But if we want to do it, we do it to our full chest. So why they are raking billions, we'll be doing trillions. Well, let's not go by that way, okay? Thank you very much, Dr. Badore, for that fantastic one. Well, while he was speaking, um, uh, one of our guest speakers walked in, Mrs. Kemi, Ar Kemi Ariola, uh, of the Federal Minister of Youth and Sports Development. A round of applause for her, please. Where she's seated, just wave us. She'll be joining, of course, uh, the next panel session. We're delving straight. This chair has been longing for people to sit on it. And this is the time to use this chair now. We're going straight into our very first panel discussion under the title, Enabling More Women with Digital Skills for Business, Relationship, and Family. And um, of course, in no particular order, permit me, I'm going to be reading an abridged version of uh, their profiles because time is fast spent. I'll, I'm starting with Anne Melody Uluwakemi Ariola. Please, um, the ATCON president will still be disturbing you today. <laughs> Engineer Namani, please give us the orders of uh, presenting this to the EVC. Please to the podium, ma'am. Thank you very much. <laughs> Ably represented by the head media and public relations, NCC, Mrs. Grace Ugwebo, and Mrs. Trudy Tony, the principal manager licensing and authorization of the NCC. Let's appreciate them, please. <laughs> While that is on, uh, permit me to quickly go through the abridged profile of our guest. Uluwa Kemi is an innovative public relations expert, a tactical social development specialist, and business support services advisor with a strategic intent premised on sustainable economic growth, inventive partnerships, and youth empowerment with high profile engagement across private and public sectors. She has a track record of consistent corporate performance. She wears several caps, yet exudes the charm and the elegance of a prima donna. She is currently the special assistant on ICT and corporate relations to the Minister of Youth and Sports of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, actively running her world-class PR bespoke boutique, the Varsity PR, and an MBA scholar. She has effortlessly combined the three, ensuring none suffers. I'm gonna run down. As a purebred theorist and analyst, she expanded her horizons in 2009 by navigating into digital public relations through the birthing of Vivacity PR, whose excellent imprints have continued to command media spotlight. The brand has its strategic specialization in entertainment, corporate, and political PR. Over the years, it has been involved in promoting many groundbreaking events, international artists, corporate firms, and political aspirants. It has become well known for building and protecting reputations with effective and affordable communications and promotions across various media channels. This global brand has continued to impact businesses locally and globally 
through the develop deployment of public relations, digital and brand integration for business optimization. Please welcome on stage and Melody Yolua Kemi Ariola as one of the speakers for this uh, session. Please appreciate her as she comes on stage. Up on the list is Abimbola Comfort Ongu Hope I got that this time around. Mrs. Abimbola Comfort Ongu is the founder of the Digital Women Support Group, a body of two, over 250 women founded with the purpose of taking care of the emotional, psychological, and other needs of women of various classes and creders. She is the chief chef at uh, Beams Kitchen, an online kitchen for special healthy delicacies, a certified public speaker and human resource manager among other roles. With a degree in business administration from the Lagos State University and fellowship of the Chartered Institute of Loan and Risk Management of Nigeria and graduate membership of the Chartered Institute of Purchasing and Supply Management and membership of the United States Institute of Peace Ongucheka, no doubt, readily possess what it takes to play versatile roles in the intellectual space. She is a good listener who is very passionate about women, teenagers, youth, and children. She is certified and qualified in no fewer than eight courses of which in collaboration, communication, and remote working University of Leeds, England. She is also certified in emotional intelligence, strategic human resource management, and life coaching essentials. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me to make welcome a bimbola comfort on which you cry. Up next is Uloma Obichere. She is well-driven passion. She has a well-driven passion for e-commerce and has paddled the boats of her entrepreneurial spirits into becoming the co-founder of the fast-growing company Cat Rollers Nigeria, an e-commerce marketplace and website for product services and real estate. With a bachelor's degree in industrial science and technology from the Federal University of Technology, Uwiri, and a certificate in the Road to Growth Program of the Enterprise Development Center, EDC, Pan African University, Lagos, Obichere remains tenacious as an entrepreneur with a promising game changing instinct in the status quo of Nigeria's e commerce industry. In this digital age and time, she has an undying passion for made in Nigeria products and services and has created a haven for manufacturers and sellers of same to reach more of their customers and clients online and grow their startups and businesses in the Naira card section of cardrollers.com. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me to make welcome Uloma Obichere. <laughs> Last but not the least, we have Titi Adewusi. Titi is co-founder Ninja Kids, an edutech company founded by three Nigerian sisters all passionate about revolutionizing and the learning experience of kids through play, repetition, and practice using fun learning games. Ninja Kids has developed an online and mobile platform that helps children ages three to 13 years understand and retain knowledge, as well as excel in their academics using interactive fun games. Ninja Kids is uh, passionate about revolution revolutionizing the learning experience of kids using fun learning games. Titi was also selected as one of the leading ladies of Africa 100 Inspiring Women in 2020, an experienced business and management consultant. Titi has been a volunteer teacher for over 15 years and is currently the chairperson of Betsida Child Support Agency, an NGO that provides free education to children across poor and underserved communities across Sub-Saharan Africa, Sub-Saharan Nigeria. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me to make welcome Titi Adewusi. A round of applause for her. And of course, moderating this seg segment, we have the president of ATCON, engineer Ikechuku Namani. He's the president and chief executive of the Association of Telecommunications Companies of Nigeria, ATCON, which parades no fewer than 100 member companies across all sectors of the telecom and ICT industry. Engineer Ikechuku, Namani inevitably plays a prominent role in Nigeria's telecommunication sector with a manifest active interest in promoting forward-looking industry policies for the growth of the industry across Africa. He works with both regulators as well as operators to achieve the goals of the industry. Under his leadership as the Chief Executive Officer of Medallion Communications Limited, the Medallion Dis Data Center in Lagos is rated the most interconnected facility in the West African sub-region being the number one pairing point for the region and boosting all submarine cables in the region. Long distance providers, metro fiber providers, mobile services providers, OTT providers, 
internet exchange, vast providers, amongst others. Engineer Namani, who holds a bachelor's degree in me mechanical engineering from the University of Nigeria and Suka, and master's degree in mechanical engineering from Tennessee State University, Nashville, United States of America, has also promoted the establishment of telecom infrastructure in several African countries, including Ghana, Togo, Liberia, Sierra Leone, Ivory Coast, Senegal, Kenya, Uganda, Botswana, and Angola, amongst others. For his professional astuteness and commitment in the telecoms industry, he has won several national and international awards. His contribution to the growth of telecoms and ICT industry in the global information technology space have been robust. And one of his recent awards in 2021, the outstanding promoter of ICT for national development at the Titans of Tech Hall of Fame Awards. Ladies and gentlemen, beautiful ladies and women in the house, join me to make welcome engineer Ike Chuku Namani as the moderator for this section. He's actually blessed among women. <laughs> All right, so I meant to understand that Onyinye Ene is also on this panel session with a doctorate degree in accounting after obtaining a master's in international economics and finance and a bachelor's degree in accounting Dr. Onye Ene, by all standards, qualifies as a development personnel, a proficiency in leadership and mentoring, which has spanned a 10-year impactful experience as a resource person and technical expert at the Chikeo Koli Center for Entrepreneurial Studies at the Namdi Azikiwe University, Oka, gives a resounding testimony of her intellectual astuteness. She has an unrelenting passion in the capacity development of young entrepreneurs to start strategically build and grow profitable businesses. With a commitment to women empowerment, NA has continuously worked on the development of viable business plans, proposals, and acquisition of requisite digital skills on sustainable business ventures for young women. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Onyinye Ene to the podium. <coughs> All right, Njinae Kechuku will be dealing with these women in the next, <laughs> in a very technical way. You yeah, are blessed in the next, um, 15 minutes, and please do well to note down your questions uh, so that afterwards we can take all of the questions that may arise as a result of this. Bon appétit. Thank you so much, and uh, thanks everybody for uh, being with us uh, so far. Uh, as we said, we've got 15 minutes, and we're going to be very brief but very uh, efficient. Uh, first, I think I'll allow each panelist to just speak uh, for a few minutes about the subject matter. Uh, in no particular order, so we can at least uh, enlighten the uh, audience of our worldview on this subject matter, which is uh, how do we truly enable uh, more women um, with digital skills for both business, uh, relationship, and family. Now, this is very important just to uh, put some light on the subject matter, because what normally happens is before now, uh, women have to choose between uh, being full-time housewife or being a working, you know, woman. And it's always been a challenge in the past. But with technology, with digitization, with the ability to pretty much uh, uh, work from home and the rest of it, now that has changed. Uh, thanks to COVID, in no small part, but even before COVID, we've seen that uh, uh, transition in human life. So uh, I believe the uh, uh, panelists will be able to speak specifically and uh, see how we take it. So thanks. If you can just testing, testing, one, two, three. Just to make sure it was working. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much, uh, gentlemen amongst women. Um, it's awesome to be here this afternoon. I, I really do love this particular discussion about um, women in the in the tech area um when i went to school um i did study electronic and telecommunications engineering undergrad and i think uh, out of a class of uh, 300 gentlemen it was just three of us that were women and uh, i know that that figure has changed drastically now um i see more of a 20 percent um female particip participation in um STEM subjects, and that's great, but we do want to see it get up to 50%, and probably even bet up to 70%, because they do say that what a man can do, a woman can do. A woman can do. 
we need to be alive in this room. So yes, um, w one thing that does stick out is the fact that women sometimes see ICT as a, a very complex subject. Uh, they see it as something that's sometimes uh, out of their reach. But um, one thing I speak about is just bringing it down to the basics, and that's in anything I cook for dinner every day, I must check Google first before I start to cook, even if I know how to cook it. Recently, I just uh, learned about um, pepper soup okra. It's an okra soup that you add pepper soup ingredients, and I must tell you, it's delicious. Everyone should try it. But I learned it from Google. And someone put up that recipe on Google. And someone is, you know, is teaching us how to do these things. So I'm just breaking it down to the most minimal for us to understand that, you know, whoever put that recipe up, whoever started that, can equally monetize this. So ICT doesn't have to be that complex. Bringing ICT into your businesses. Um, you know, as we go along, I'll talk about the amount of courses that the Federal Ministry of Youth and Sports Development has um, for the young people, which are inclusive of um, young females. I'll also speak about the training to enterprise. So what we do is immediately we train you, we make sure that the next day you can start up your own business by giving computers, um, uh, cameras, you know, ETC to, 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 the, to the people that we train. So we'll speak about that, you know, a lot more as we go along. But, you know, what I, the foundation I just wanted to lay immediately was that there's ICT in literally almost everything nowadays. And it's for the woman to understand what part she wants to get involved in and not to see it as too complex because even your children at home you know are very ict savvy and they can teach you certain things you don't know and one thing i like richard branson's richard branson's model that says even if i can't do it i know somebody that can and that should be something that we keep at the back of our minds thank you so much thank you. good afternoon everyone Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, multitaskers with very great achievements and beyond what you know right now, beyond your educational qualification, with ICT, you can go beyond and above. I'm a living example. I wouldn't want to take too much of our time because I know questions will still come. Who was able to use ICT to develop herself tremendously? I, reson I could resonate with um, confidence when she was speaking my background from a mother who was an illiterate, may God bless her memory, who gave birth to eight children, seven girls and a guy, from a woman who probably finished her more than three or four, single-handedly trained eight children with masters, with Harvard certifications, name it, and there are seven girls and a guy. And we decided that though our mothers don't have a voice, we want to have a voice, the seven girls. So you can imagine, my mom didn't have a voice. She was from the north. My father is from Ogun State. <coughs> Excuse me. I am I'm married to an Igbo man. So I just feel like, OK, my mom didn't have a choice, a voice. We watched her being, let me not use the word brutalized. We watched her being sh shut down. She couldn't speak. In the process, she lost a tooth from being brutalized by her husband, yet she couldn't speak. And she believed that, OK, I have to be here to be, you know, to protect these children. But it got to a point, she couldn't take it any longer. She left. And I always say to my women, to women who are that if my mother didn't leave my dad, we wouldn't have to say that. So we have this group of women, we call ourselves Digital Women Support Initiatives, where we women support ourselves. Digitally, no matter where you are all over the world, we're over 250 women the US, Canada, everywhere, name it. And we all have, you know, as our faces are different, so our problems. So these women come together, we speak. You can speak faceless, and you can speak physically. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's a privilege to be here. My name is Uloma Obichere. I'm the founder and CEO of cartrollers.com, which is an e-commerce uh, website for products and rest of that has been mentioned. Now, I, um, I am more knowledgeable when it comes to e-commerce, so I will kind of delve in that area. A lot of us in this room are already selling online. I want to believe that. But I want to ask a question, please. How many of us have a certification, any form of IT certification? You're a woman. You have an IT certification. 
Please look around. Um, if this mic is not friendly, I'll shift. Please look around. It, that's worrisome. I had um, football or maybe, uh, what do you call it now? Toys that are like robots. As a girl, if you haven't had a robot toy growing up, please look around. It's important. Now, the way we are raised, we are raised with dolls, and we are still doing it to our, our daughters. Nothing techy, nothing to show. We think tech is for the men. The world we are going into right now is going to be brutal. And if you are not equipped, you might be swallowed. And it's, it's, it's an unapologetic situation right now. There are a lot of tools online that can help you as a tech person. Have one certification. The world we are going into, without it, you won't be relevant. It's the truth. Have one certification online. Make sure you take a course this year. Make it a target. Have one digital certification, one. There are a lot out there. So we women, first of all, be interested in things like this. is not for men only. I, I run a business in a man-dominated world. Most of these e-commerce giants you hear about are men. Jeff Bezos, Jack Ma, they are men. So it's a lot of courage to go into e-commerce as a woman because I see there are opportunities. Let me give you a little statistics. In my company, I have you know, hundreds of sellers on our, on our platform. More than 90% of those sellers are women. And more than 70% of those sellers are my best sellers, as in they make the most money, the most sales. What does that tell you? Women are doing a lot of things, but we are not bold to wear our crowns. We, don't, we are not bold to own up to what we are doing. So this is very important. It is important for you to have interest, first of all, that this tech world is not only for men. It is for you. And the beautiful thing about it is that a business that a woman built is bigger because we are, we, we are made to nurture. Naturally, nurture things till they grow. And we are very, women have endurance. So a, a, a woman's business is likely to survive a very with accounting, his wife being an accountant and having to ask her to resign, like I was just close to, you know, leaving the hall because I am an accountant and I've been teaching accounting for close to 10 years. Now I'll come from the grassroots because in the university you see, um, I'm sorry, but I'll put it this way, aimless, aimless youths, not like, they're not aimless, but they have courses they want to do. They have, they're reading courses for their parents. They're reading courses because, okay, now JAMB is about, you know, the last JAMB score, a lot of people did not do very well post-COVID. Okay, so you see people that want to get into school. The first thing is to get into that school. So they grab any course that is available and they get in there. Am I communicating? So you see that is the first issue. So when you come in contact with this youth, with these people, they are there to give in four years and now pursue their dream. Usually I see them and they tell you, I want to do this for my parents. They want me to read law. They want me to read one other course. So they're doing it, but they know they don't have the passion to do this. But their parents and the, or the society want that certificate and they are out there to get it for four years and probably pursue what they want to do. So we are, when you go out there to mentor these people, these young girls, you see the enormous talent that is in these young women. When I say they are talents, like they have a lot of talents in Nigeria, in Nigerian universities moving around that are untapped, unfortunately. So you, um, once we talk to them and you get them, we have I've been with the Chico Coli Center for Entrepreneurial Studies. The moment they have an idea and they bring it to you, you'll be amazed at what they know. Okay, and you see you don't teach that. So it's about giving them that value, okay? Whatever you do, you must first of all have to think of the value you're giving, okay? When those students and when those girls have that value, they can now conquer the world because they have what it takes to get out there. So hopefully, Mr. Atcon, I've learned a lot, by the way, from all these beautiful ladies, and I'm glad I came all the way from Anambra State for this event. Yes, thank you very much.
Um, thank you so much. Um, that's uh, amazing. I'm sure we've all learned a lot already. Um, I'll just uh, ask um, each of us to speak one more, and then we'll take one or two questions so that we can at least meet up with our timeline. Um, the point I want us to make in as, as brief as possible is where are the opportunities that people from this um, event and those watching online can immediately start participating in? I know you listed a few, so please. So sorry, um, I know I was introduced earlier. Uh, I'll do that once again. I'll try to be fast. I'm Ulua Kemiarela. I'm the special assistant on ICT and corporate relations to the Honorable Minister of Youth and Sports Development. I've said that again because I want us to know that the federal government has a good number of ICT initiatives that are available to young people. And obviously we know that the young people does include the women. Um, one of the most important, and we've trained about 100,000 young people last year in uh, digital skills with Google. Google My Business, uh, even my personal business, um, has seen a 1,000% gain from using Google My Business. And I'm not even joking. If you go online and search for my business, I sell underwear. But if you go online and you search for my business, you'll see that you'll find it as one of the top listed business because I use ICT to build it. And we've got our young people doing that as well. So with, with, um, with Google, we've, we've trained on things like uh, you know, cloud computing. We've trained on this Google My Business and a whole lot more. We're also working with IBM. We're working with Microsoft. But these things, what is most important is these certifications are available free online. So you can go through. And there's also we've also had um, collaborations with Airtel where you get a good, uh, I think, about 33% discount on um, purchasing data in order to access these particular courses. From time to time, the Ministry of Youth and Sports Development also has our training to enterprise, um, which we just concluded the economic sustainability plan one, where 2,000 young people went home with, after six weeks training, they all went home with computers and uh, cameras and, and you know anything to, to build their businesses. Um, so visit the Ministry of Youth and Sports website and you'll see we also have our work experience program where we get young people to work in organizations as interns. But on a lot of the occasions, we've seen these organizations retain these young people as um, permanent staff. You see, just as, as uh, one of my um, co-panelists on the stage said, the, the business is changing. Uh, Post-COVID, things have changed. Once upon a time, did you use, OK, yeah, show of hands. How many of us used Zoom in our businesses before COVID came? Before COVID? No, okay. Two people. Yes, yeah, yeah. You know, Zoom seems even available. Few of us did. Some of us use Skype before, um, Google Teams and stuff like that. But we can see that I don't know the figures, and let me not throw funny figures around. But we can see there's been a tremendous increase in the use of these platforms. Just today, now I have uh, a, a young person that's just sent me an invoice for six hundred thousand naira to assist in uh, zooming some of the uh, football matches that we have happening over the next few days. This didn't happen before. But, you know, skills are, the skills that you need now are changing. And we have them. We, the young people, you know, maybe last year I was still a young person, but, you know, we're still, you know, we, the young people, we have these skills. And big multinational organizations, they need us now. So you need to position yourself to be sought after. I've never gone to look for a job. I want them to come and look for me. So, therefore, if you go to my Instagram page, you don't see me slay queen, you know. No. Am I sitting? You go to my status update. No, if you ever see me doing like this, there's something behind it. What are you promoting when you promote yourself online? It's very important. So that now, when I, I literally speak at least twice a week in different events now. It never happened before. Now I'm charging people. Oh, people, this event, I didn't pay, but next time. You know? But what, what, what I'm trying to say is because people are looking for me because of the messages that I'm putting out there about myself. So use the platforms. And Instagram is free. You don't pay to use it. So I'm, I'm just talking from the basic, most basic things that are available to you. Use what, you know, what is out there. Like I said, the Federal Ministry of Youth and Sports, we've got uh, at least 25 different initiatives that are available for young people at the moment. So please key into them because a lot of people feel 
it's a man no man uh, uh, world and i can assure you that it isn't you can go out there and look you know for testimonies of people that that have done these things please ensure as 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 you've been told you do get certified it's very very important ensure you educate yourselves as much as i studied te telecoms engineering or something i branched out into the pr world now i'm in the cooking world then i'm selling this you know all these things where did i learn them online it's not about everyone saying we need to change the curriculum i agree yeah don't don't get me wrong but what about your own personal curriculum it's about your own personal self development everybody that goes out there to do masters and phd and you know all these i know in 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 london unfortunately you know that not unfortunately but that was where i grew up most people don't even wait for the bscs and the bngs and and all of those things it's all about short courses there are so many short courses that are available to us online either free or at a cost of next to nothing but we don't key in everyone in this room if i'm going to leave you with one thing it's just going to be key in thank you wow fantastic let me let me follow in her footsteps let me introduce myself again my name is abimbola Shumefu Onwuchekwa. Shumefu is my father's name. Onwuchekwa is my husband's name. For real, and that's true. Self-development. My mom didn't go to school, like I said. My dad went to school, but not school, school, school. She was a very intelligent woman, but no opportunities. She didn't have a voice. Well, she was from the north, like I said. So she believed that my husband, my children, so she lived her entire life taking care of her eight children, trying to please her husband. Sometimes we would ask her, seven girls, one boy. Boy was your second born. What were you still looking for? Well, she needed, your daddy would need one more boy. So where, where am I coming from? My mom was very intelligent. There are so many very intelligent women out there who lacked the opportunities. Some have the opportunities but are emotionally imbalanced. A lot of women are walking on the street. A lot of us sitting down here have one or two issues we're going through, but we're just putting up the faces. Mm -hmm. So I just sat down like, being boy, you're not bad. Primary school, I was a head girl. We were about 100 and something in my class, yeah? I, secondary school in the 80s. I was the head girl at Jack Day School, you know? I wore one uniform for like a year or two until the teacher called me to say, well, this part, this part is now white. Our uniform is green. Yeah, that was how I grew up, yeah. And I grew up under an environment where English was taught in Yoruba. Should I give you an example? Yes. Yeah. Wa non. Non is the name of any person, place, or thing. Now, okay, okay, okay. That was how I learned my English. Oh, yes. So I speak Yoruba very well. I put all the lines and everything. And I speak English well, too. And I'm glad that now my daughter is here. She speaks English. She speaks Spanish. She speaks French. She sings, she sells, she, the, my second born is a lawyer, she's, a, she's an influencer, she's got everything. In short, during the lockdown, she was online and made her thousands, she was in her room. And talking about the Digital Women Support Initiative, why I'm here today, we have these women that are so super intelligent, but not aware. Mm. And again, like I heard, I read somewhere yesterday, not all problems are problems. Some problems are opportunities mm. to throw you to your next level. Yes. So I wanted to go home with that today. I have women on that platform that are so, so are, some of them are here today. They said they will be here. Name it and they are here. Some of, uh, let me give an example of a particular woman who was, well, battered, had a terrible marriage. She still does though. And we had to enroll her in the psychiatric hospital during the COVID-19 lockdown. So she was being treated virtually. Thank God to ICT. She was at the verge of committing suicide when a friend of hers says, come, let me introduce you to a group. You'll be all right. And we supported her. As I speak with you, she called me last month, one of the happiest calls I've ever received. They call me Mommy Beams. Mommy Beams, let me tell you, I have, I opened, well, I called somebody from Piggy Vest to come talk to them. I saved 2,000 every day. Now she imports clothes from Turkey. She has no shop, she has no visible shop, she wouldn't have been able to afford to rent a shop. But on her platform, her almost 200 women who buy things, and I see every day, 12 midnight, one, mid one in the midnight, she's posting two, 12 dollars, 
$80, these dollars, and dropping the, shirt, the, the, the clothes. And she recently had to pick some things for a woman that we rescued, and she sent her delivery person to come help me pick up those things to give to the other woman that has been depressed, and now she's mentoring the other woman. So what am I saying? When women support themselves, great things happen. Before now, we couldn't do it, you know, um, virtually, but now we can do it virtually. Even you can get your house helps. Don't tell me you're not educated. That, that thing you have, like you said, Mr. Cybercrime Expert, is a computer. I wanted to get a house help for somebody. She's an illiterate. And she said, Emma, send the text. Please, voice notes. And this woman was conversing excellently, doing all her deals and everything with the, with the WhatsApp. So where do you start from? Your phone. WhatsApp. Thank you very much. OK, thanks. Um, our time is literally up. But we're going to take at least one question, and then maybe others can respond. So please, uh, uh, one question. If somebody, uh, OK, I see a hand up over there. Thank you. Good afternoon. A very pleasant afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is Damilola Duodola. Okay, so my question is for uh, Mommy Beams. Um, your initiative, how do we enroll? Please, thank you. You actually don't need to enroll. I'll, I'll, I'll give you my number, you come on WhatsApp, and that's it, you're in. <laughs> um, okay, any other question? We can take one more. One. Any other question any other or contribution, one. briefly? Um, okay, in the absence. Okay, okay someone says. Thank you so much. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm not going to ask you a question. I'm not asking any question. Like what you said, you said women supporting women. I'm the founder of Young Widows Mind. I have young widows with stories between the age of 22 and um, 40 years. And there's one thing I'm passionate about. I'm so passionate about women empowerment. And um, I would like to empower I don't know whether they are up to 500 women free for you. Ooh. 500 women free. I need empowerment in my life. <laughs> so you now have 495. Thank okay. you so much, ma'am. And Bye. just to let you know, she, I was sitting right beside her. And when they talked of connecting, I collected her number. And I invited her to please come talk to my women. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, thanks so much. Um, I think uh, we we'll just take one minute, please. P last comment from each person. Just one minute, please. Not more than one minute. Okay. Should we start from? Okay. So, for women, for us women, and for very um, young girls, I'm always in contact with young girls, and I tell them, you can pursue, you can get that certificate at the same time. You do what you have passion for. You can combine the two of them. It's all about the passion you have. And while doing it, you try to have a heart. You know that we are, we are affected by so many things. We talk of um, the internet. While you go there, I tell my students, go there with a sieve. We know what a sieve is, OK? Get all those information you want. Put the ones you don't need. Take them away because they influence us no matter what we think. No matter what you, what you read, what you see influences your decision. So you go to the internet with a sieve, a very tight one. We need to sieve out wrong information that we don't need and take only the positives. We need the positives. And while at it, if you can mentor anybody, try and do it. Thank you, Thank you. very much. OK, one minute. Um, Everybody has a 24 hours every day. So um, most of those hours are spent just scrolling on your phone. I'll just give you places that you can go and get something useful. There's a site called opportunitydesk.org. Opportunitydesk.org. There are billions of opportunities every day for Nigerian women. Please go there. Then another place is um, Google Primer. It's an app. Google Primer is a place where you can source for um, you can l learn, you know, tr get trainings. Most of these things are free. Um, Google Digital Skills for Africa. 
please write it down. Google Digital Skills for Africa. Um, yeah, that's that. Then Udemy.com. Udemy, you have to pay. But some of, sometimes they do promos. So you can learn a course for that's $5, $10. Yeah, so um, go to Udemy, learn something, then go and take the exam. Get one certification, at least one, and then that's it. That's just it. Thank you. What minutes? I would like to use less. As a woman, you're bigger than you. You are loaded. See yourself beyond you. And one other thing, please, no matter what you're going through, there is another woman beside you that is going through something worse. You know the solution? Speak up. Speak to the right person, and you're good. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, yes, quickly, I'm going to talk about you trying to see ICT in everything you do. Try to, so I, I'm now wearing a Fitbit. I'm measuring my steps as I'm losing weight. So I, I try to walk up and down now. Even when you don't need me to go somewhere, I will go, just so that I can count more steps. But there's ICT in everything you do. Try to ensure you incorporate ICT. And the reason why I'm saying this is it's not about today. It's about tomorrow. You do not want to become obsolete because that is what will happen to you if you do not keep up or keep ahead of times. Then I'd also like to give you two nice pieces of information. Um, Federal Ministry of Youth and Sports Development uh, earlier this week, I believe, and last week, partnered with two organizations. One, namely the Next Titan, the second one being conga.com. The partnership with the Next Titan um, Entrepreneurial Business Show means we'll be empowering up to 1,000 people with between 250 and 3 million Naira to run their businesses. So if you can still apply for the Next Titan Show. So Next Titan Show before was about who wins. So now it's no longer about who wins, it's about who has an innovative idea. That's number one. Then number two, the partnership with Conga, which is more along the e-commerce line, we now take away at least 50% of the onboarding fee. So instead of paying the 8,000 Naira onboarding fee, we are paying half of it for you. And uh, the commission from sales, normally as Conga does, is now reduced significantly when it's through that, the partnership with the Federal Ministry of Youth and Sports. So try to see ICT in everything you do. Try to find a way you can increase your e-commerce, increase your sales, even if it's services, try to find a way you can increase that. Thank you. Thanks so much. Uh, I definitely appreciate you all. It's been, I'm sure everybody has been blessed by this panel, and we thank you all. Yes, Pastor. Thank you, Pastor. A round of applause for this beautiful panel. While they are still at that, I want to invite the representative of the Oni of Ife, Chief Mrs. Grace Adekonle, to help us with the presentation of uh, plaques for honoring this in invitation. And of course, the conveners, Ugochi Emmanuel and Hako Convener, will join in the picture uh, opportunity. Engineer Kechiko, you are blessed. You actually dealt with them very well. A round of applause for this young man, blessed in the midst of women. Please, all of this information is not just for talking sake. Let's get numbers, let's connect and do the needful. Can we have the flags quickly, please? A round of applause for them. I could relate with Tonye Krikwa when you were talking. Some people actually learned with, um, you know, I know of a teacher then who tell you, A for apple, kinimo we. <laughs> so some of us went through that. But today, of course, you're standing strong. Please appreciate them one more time. And ensure that you get all of their numbers before they leave here. I'm already part of the 500. It's not 495 that is the many. I need empowerment in my life. It's not only me that waka come. <laughs> Please quickly. Thank you. Just go up stage. Chief Mrs. Who was the honors. It's not easy to walk in the heels of these women at all. All right. You want to say something? Good afternoon, everybody. Greetings from KBAC, um, the owner of IFE. He was supposed to be here, but for some reasons he couldn't make it, so he sent me to represent him. I'm glad to be among these great women, and I've learned a lot. I want to present this award to Oye. Congratulations. I want to present this to Kemi Ann Ariola. Beautiful woman. <laughs> Thank you. 
I would also want to present this to Abimbola Onwuchekwa. And lastly, from the organizers, I would want to present this to Uloma Obichere. All right, let's strike a pose. Can you people be nice enough to have the man close to the middle? Oh. And like you know, please. Let the hardware break down the software. Uh -uh. Smile. As we are having bone straight from the left and the right, let's have Gori Makwa in the middle. <laughs> the organizer of this event, I've had the opportunity of doing this several years ago. And um, so one please, house, please. please can, we, can we do that quietly, please, you know? Thank you very much. Thank you. I want to say a very big thank you to the organizers of this event. I've had the opportunity of putting together something like this several years ago. And I understand that it's extremely not easy to bring people together like this, especially when a lot of people... Can I use that? <laughs> I did. I get to come. Oh, okay. 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 Um, we've had a lot of people come out here to discuss, and I wouldn't want to take so much of our time. So I will just run through this from a different perspective entirely. Despite the mass entry of women into exclusively male domains, glass ceilings have still not been shattered. Now, we know, we understand that a lot of women are completely involved in activities, entrepreneurial activities, businesses, and all of that. But that is still a very minute percentage of what we have. How many of us here still believe that a woman's place is only in the kitchen? Can I see your hand up if you still believe that a woman's place is just in the kitchen? None. Beautiful. I remember several years back, Somebody I know made a speech and said categorically that a woman's place belongs to the other room. And I totally disagree with that because that's not true. That's not true. Our women have come up and have become different. Now our women take the bull by the horns and display their abilities for the whole world to see. Without wasting so much of our time, I'd like to quickly run through some of the challenges that our, our women go through in businesses. Please, can we respectfully just uh, put a hold on that or do that quietly? So it's really, 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 you know, distracting. Please, please, please. Thank you very much. We can take those numbers quietly and then it continues there. Thank you very much, please. I believe there should be space for networking after this program. So please give me just five minutes of your time to finish up what I just started. Beautiful. Okay, so I'll quickly look at some of the challenges that our women face. Our women entrepreneurs. Some of the challenges we face. Some of the opportunities we have to expand and grow our business. And then finally, some tech trends that we can adopt to make business better. Women have always been entrepreneurs. Women have always been business people. But at what level? At the micro level. We've always done our businesses codedly. Thing for us. Ugochi. Aha. Uh -huh. So please let's put our minds at rest. I understand. I'm hungry too, so I understand. Okay, so um define yes, obviously. So define social expectations. Like I mentioned earlier, a lot of people believe that the place of a woman is in the kitchen. No, let me come this way so that I would take note of those that are making noise. Please, someone should write their names. Okay, so um, some of the challenges that our women face is that a lot of people believe that a woman's place is in the kitchen. Until recently, 
that norm had continued because a lot of people felt, why is a woman doing this? You have kids to take care of. You have your husband to take care of. You have the home. Mind you, that is a full-time job on its own. How many of us agree with me that managing a home, managing kids, especially when you have the girl child, the girl child, we, 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 we need to be extremely careful of how we manage our girl child these days because we have a lot of pedophiles around. So it's not like the olden days where we just say, we just want to face our businesses and then we'll let our children and our homes suffer. We need to be able to create that balance. Okay, so another thing that a woman goes through challenge is assessing funds. I don't know why, but I don't know, has anybody ever experienced that? You try to get funds for your business and there's a roadblock every day, every day. It's not, it's not really like that for the male folks, actually. Yes, it's not. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you why. It's not. It's not. I've applied for a loan and I know a couple of men that did with me. It, it was given to them. They didn't give to me. And I didn't know what they submitted that I didn't submit. So I think it was a thing of a gender thing. Don't worry, I know what I'm saying, sir. <laughs> okay, so another problem that our ladies, um, our ladies and uh, female entrepreneurs encounter is struggling to be taken seriously. Most times, they see female entrepreneurs as people that would be frustrated in business. But in the long run, it's actually the women that actually endure most. You understand? Because God has actually created us to be completely different from the male folks. We can take it, we can absorb, we can endure to the very last. Unlike the men that give up easily. <laughs> okay, so another problem, another challenge that female entrepreneurs face is balancing business and family life. You see, when a child goes wrong, or when a child is not well trained, who do they blame for this? Beautiful. So a woman has that duty of grooming her home, grooming her kids, taking care of her husband, ensuring that the home is in order. And then you still want her to do well in business. It's, it, it's double work for the woman. It's a bigger challenge. Because the truth is, if anything happens to your home, if anything goes wrong with your kids, you are the number one person that will be faulted. So one major problem that our women have faced is being able to balance business life and family life. It has been a problem. But I want to, I want to encourage us today. I know it is really not too um, wonderful to hand our kids over to mates, but that's the option. Get a maid. If it's possible, install cameras in your home to be able to monitor what these people do so that you are you're sure that, you're, you're, you're sure that your kids are in good hands even while you go out there for your business. So lastly, coping with the fear of failure. This is another challenge that most female entrepreneurs face. Most people are afraid to fail. The fear of what people will say if I go down. What happens to me if I don't succeed? What happens to, what will they say? I know a lot of people have that kind of challenge. But I know that with the kind of groups that we currently have, women supporting women, that's going to be a thing of the past. Because women are going to be actively involved in encouraging each other to grow when all hope is lost. Okay, so I'm moving to opportunities to expand and grow. Our women should look closely at becoming creative IT techs. Somebody said something about training, and I completely agree with her. You need to get trained. You need to get involved in the digital world. Now, even if you don't know how to do this, please get a digital marketer. If you feel you're too busy to, to you know, go for trainings, get a digital market marketer. Get your business out in the open. Make sure that people get to see your business because that is one way to grow. Secondly, have a business continuity plan. Please, how many of us here have business continuity plans for our businesses? How many of us have business continuity plans for our businesses? Oh, just one person. Oh, great. That's beautiful. Just a handful of us anyway. 
Okay, so let me let me quickly enlighten us. A business continuity plan is um, a, a plan that you put in place on how you can quickly recover from um, a, a, a major event, maybe a fire outbreak, maybe a flood or theft or uh, um, anything at all. So you need to have a plan on how your business can bounce back, you know, whenever there is a major challenge or an issue that comes up. Now, some people mistake disaster recovery for business continuity plan. Please, are not the same. Disaster recovery is centered just on IT infrastructure. Recovering your data, your IT stuff, anytime there's a major problem. But business continuity plan in its entirety involves everything about the business. Human resources, the customer care. Can your, can your customer care work conveniently from home in case there's an issue with your business? Have you put that in place? Do you have voice solutions that will enable your customer service do and respond to calls from anywhere in the world? That is very important. Then, Toddy, we're looking at training. We need to get trained. The importance of training can never be overemphasized. How many of us have attended trainings, any training this year? Vitral, physical, okay, 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 that's interesting. But it's very important that we get trained. Extremely important that you get trained. Ensure that your business is not on the same level every year. No matter how many years experience you have, you need to keep equipping yourself with knowledge because things are changing. The trends are actually changing. Okay, lastly, I want to leave us with this. No matter how far you feel you have gone as a lady, it's actually not too late for you to equip yourself with the basic knowledge to run your business. Times have changed. And the woman folk has taken the bull by the horn and displayed their abilities for the whole world to see. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Um, of course, you're able to pull through. We want to apologize for the little distraction there. Uh, but like you said, of course, uh, people are trying to take opportunity of all of the things that we have here today. And she has highlighted a whole lot of challenges and how we can uh, scale through. All of the speakers here have hounded on something get yourself trained, get trained, no matter how short, online trainings, short ones to equip yourself so that at least at, at every point in time, you are at par with all of the requirements of the 21st century. Please, a round of applause for Hoop Telecommunications as represented by Maureen Okafo there. Thank you very much. Yes, we're moving, 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 and of course, uh, we're almost getting to the mark. Up next is um, Tinoa Adeo Guntuyi, Head Core Networks and Solutions at ICSL will be talking to us about taking the front seat in tech entrepreneurship. Of course, uh, uh, she will be talking to us in the next five to 10 minutes as to what she's doing it within her field and how you and I can take advantage as a woman in technology. While she's coming to take the microphone, Tino Ade Oguntuyi is a seasoned and transformational information technologist with over a decade of experience in IP networks, technical sales, IT solutions, design, consulting, and customer experience. Reaching the unreached and unconnected is one of her drive, and that has propelled her to actively project, manage hotspot solutions in rural communities, leveraging on GSM backhauling via VSAT. Over the years, she has trained a good number of young IT engineers and non-technical staff, a passionate advocate of women's empowerment in ICT and STEM, a dedicated junior achievement Nigeria volunteer, and a member of the Internet Society Nigeria chapter. She backed the promoter of ICT development in Nigeria Award and has spoken at various technology events. Tinoade is the head of Core Networks and Solutions at Information Connectivity Solutions Limited. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me. Make welcome Tinoade Ogunti on the podium. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. Standing on all existing protocols. If I, if I do not say anything again today, I personally have learned. And I'm very happy that uh, while the red carpet was going on, I told the interviewer that one of the things I want to do today is to learn, 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 and unlearn. And I'm really happy I've been able to do that. Uh, confidence is not on seat, but she's one of my very proud women. I really love and respect her. 
Uh, thank you, everyone that has spoken. Uh, like she rightly mentioned, my name is Tinade Oguntui. And in the male-dominated field, I happen to be the head of networks, IP networks, that's Internet Protocol Networks and Solutions and Design in ICSL. ICSL is a premium ISP in Lagos, Nigeria, who also helps with one connectivity, so it's our duty and our business to connect businesses all over the world. Regardless of where you are, you can communicate. And we use different communication tools and technology tools to deliver all of these, varying from VSAT that you see, like that Oops communication uh, board. You can see masts, you see towers, you see radio links, you see fiber optics on the road. And we even go as far as using SIM. That's the regular SIM card to also communicate. So most of these businesses or institutions that you go, you don't even know you are communicating to them via same technology. So talking about taking the front row or front seat in tech through STEM. Confidence, to be honest, I really dealt with it. And by starting with, everyone has the right to define what the front row or front seat is. However, I'll be taking it from another perspective, and that is from the tech aspect. I'll give you one or two examples or live lessons. I remember starting off in 2008. I used to be called under the table engineer. And it's not far-fetched. I liked what I wanted to do. I've seen people do it, and I know I was the only girl in the department. Every other person were guys. So they have this, and I used to sew. So they believe I could be graphical or I'm artistic. So when it's time to draw the designs, they'll say, Tino, just a pause draw. They will not even bother to explain anything. They'll just say, draw, okay, HQ is in Nabekuta and the remote is in Kano. So this one's is in. So they, they were doing that and they were getting away with it. So one day I told them, I said, if anybody brings fashion drawing here, I will not do. If you cannot explain to me what this is all about, he said, no, no, no. But they wanted me to do the design because they come out nice. So they started explaining, okay, this is what we do in IP networks. Because I started off as IT. We do computers, put and fix. Oh, your printer is not working, your scanner. So that is why I transited into IP. And since then, it's been wonderful, challenging. And I'm glad I sat comfortably in an uncomfortable role or field. So many a times... I will want to resolve issues, and maybe my subordinate will say, oh, our lead team, or our team lead, or senior escalation will talk to you. And conversations goes like this. Hello, good morning. Uh, hello, good morning. Uh, sorry, so we're having issues at this location, and now, oh, we're really sorry about that. I don't want to talk to your support team, please. I want to talk to the escalation person. They told me, I am the escalation person. No, I mean, the person I spoke with now told me an escalation, a senior escalation person will talk with them. And I was like, sorry, sir, I am the escalation person you are to talk to. Oh, really? Good morning. So we have an issue. We have, do you know what I played out? The person do not believe in any way that the, the senior escalation will be a girl. So don't let me call myself a lady. It will be a girl. So they will give me all of those attitude. And of course, I'm a, I'm a professional. And I'm trying to relate with customers. I'm Mickey and I'm really so. I'll go all out and say, okay, I haven't seen the issue. Have you tried this? Have you tried that? Have you, like, I've tried all of them. Oh, really? Can you call out your IP addresses? So by IP addresses, I mean those are the things, the, the, the tools we know to identify like an address of a thing in, in the world of networking, right? So I say, oh, can you call out? Ten dots. You know, they will be, I'm not seeing them, but glaringly I can see how they are feeling that they are talking to a girl. So at the end of everything, the issue is resolved, and you hear, thank you so much, ma. Mm. In my mind, oh, I'm now ma. Wonderful. So I'm just trying to say, those are one or some of the things we face as women in tech. But all of that had not changed anything because to me, we walk into banks, we walk into institutions, we want to have meetings, and I go by, they introduce, meet her head of network, they're like, what? A woman doing this? 
I know they give you all of that. So before now, I used to feel a little funny about it, but I don't understand that this is how we have been conditioned. So the first thing I think I will ask in the room and we take forward is that we have to all be deliberate about the reconditioning. Uh, like I said, I've learned a lot. While uh, Madam Juliet spoke, I read one time on her Instagram page when she was giving a real-life scenario of her daughter watching a cartoon called Nella. She said she sat and she was wondering what she watching that is, she's so fascinated. And she found out she was watching a young cartoon character trying to save the world, save her community, take charge of this, probably like a Deborah in the Bible. And she was like, wow. No longer the princess lying down helplessly waiting for Prince Charming to come and save them. Or a baby carrying the baby doll like one of the speakers said. Now women can also take charge, which is not in any competition with men, to be honest. If you are a woman and you're doing something great, I tell you, you are a joy and a pride to your family and to your husband. So it's not about the competition. You are not apologetic about doing what you are called to do. Just focus. Everybody talks about the gender parity. Even United Nations came and they gave us on their agenda. We have to bring inclusion. We have to, do, we have to drive it. And somebody said when he came here, Chidiberi, that mentorship is very, very important. So one of the things I give out to any new recruit, be it intern or entry engineer, that if, if I find that person is a, a, a girl or a lady like me, sorry, I use the word girl more so that I don't grow old so fast, even though I have three boys. <laughs> so I will tell them, see, you can do this. Don't get intimidated by anybody. Look at me. I'm doing this, and I've been doing it for how long? 10 years. And I'm still here because I know what I want and I pursue it. So not to boss because like I said, we have learned so much from all of our great speakers and I can see some leg <laughs> rolling. So I will just quickly relate what a woman in tech is. In Proverbs 31, sorry, I'm not trying to sound um, religious or anything, but I just want to tell us how I relate some of these things to how I see women in tech and taking the front seat, making decisions, calling the shots, breaking the glasses and whatever name we want to give them. You are an investor. Invest in yourself. Training yourself, self-development cannot be overemphasized. And it has also been mentioned during the panel. In, that, in the book, the Bible says that the woman calls out, she brings forth, she plants vineyards, meaning she invests. You need to put more. One of the things that makes women fall out easily in tech is because we too, we go by all the sentiment. Somebody will tell you, are you coping? You have three children. You have this. And you too, you just sit in their sentiment. Go all out for what you want. Go for what you want. It's your dream. Focus on it. You can make the change. The last time when picks, there's women in management uh, and business, mentioned that the, the, the gender parity is still much. Whether we like it or not, that means we don't have to keep quiet. We have to talk about it. We have to go to the grassroots. We have to tell people, you are a girl child does not mean you should end up in the kitchen. You can do it. Play with metals. Gone are those days when you see a girl child playing with metals. Say, no, 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 you are doing a boy's play. They, no, they are not doing a boy's play. Let them you know, express themselves, even as mothers, aunties, cousins, and let's encourage them, daddies, our uncles. We have the responsibility to equally help the women. And mentorship is very, very important. Role modeling, I said it once at a program in August, that when you see more female and established tech premiers, you will use just by that accomplishment to encourage that young girl coming up. You know what it does? It's just mental. Oh, if she can do it, I can do it. The other day, Madame Juliet organized the program, and a girl walked up to her and said, I never knew a woman was the head of Google. Do you know what that means? And let me tell us, when you train one person, it's arithmetic. When you train two people, 
it still looks arithmetic. But you know what you will do eventually? You have a geometric progression. Because the two people trains two people. Two people trains four people. And before you know it, it widens up. You sit here relaxed. And you see what you have done growing. And is that not the place of rest everybody wants? Oh, woman in tech. Oh, woman entrepreneur. Take charge. Go for it. Train yourselves. Nothing is too big. There are low-code or no-code programs in IT. Don't get uh, bamboozed by, oh, I don't know how to program. I don't know. There are more than 100 uh, things you can do without coding like it looks like right now. That, and you will still stay on top of your game. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I don't have all of the time. So I'll just quickly run through one or two things. You have a pencil. When you sharpen yourself, you become brighter when you write, right? So as a woman, be you in whatever space you find yourself. Make sure you sharpen yourself so that you can read clearly. Don't keep quiet about what you do. This, oh, I don't want to feel proud. It's not about it. Truly, if you know you don't want to feel proud, then you probably don't want to do anything. Make noise about those little wins. Because from there comes the encouragement for the bigger challenges. So... I think I will just say we should cut through the complexity that comes with being a woman, taking up space and the frontiers. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Sorry for rushing you like that, but you did a fantastic job. A round of applause for the mommy of three boys. I, I can imagine how they'll be, they'll be your boys, they'll be disturbing you. And someone said, in fact, I can see the way she's jumping. She's doing like the tomboy because she's into engineering. Well done, a round of applause for her. Well, talking about dreams, and as women going all out to do what they know how to do best, we're going to break it down a bit by a musical uh, performance by a lady I, want, I choose to describe as strong and tenacious. She is a polio survivor, and she's here to tell us that against all odds, she can still live her dreams. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me to welcome Mayra, a performing artist, as uh, she comes on stage. Please appreciate her. Let's appreciate her. After that, of course, we'll delve into the next panel discussion. And this time around, it's for the men. And the woman will be dealing with the men this time around. Please give it up for Mira. Thank you. Mira. Good day, everyone. My name is Mira. I am an artist and also an entrepreneur. <laughs> I'm so happy to be here with um, beautiful people, women and men. When I saw women entrepreneur, I was like, okay. Then when I came in, I saw men and I was like, fine. We have to work together to at, at least achieve something. So I'm here and I've learned a lot. And one thing, just one thing in all things is to be in the front seat. And also this is why I'm here. Iwo finds a wife, finds a good thing. And no finds a good man as a pretty thing. If I be a G over a tap, I want a call. Baby, when you're cold, I can be a fire. No retreat, no surrender. Ile awa do. I can't even for me. Ile awa do. I can't even for sure. Or you have made your vows. And Larry to shake all the stars of moon for you. And I let me, oh, Paul, I let me, oh, and Larry to shake all the stars of moon for you. Feel a go go, get a skeptic, feel a go go. 
Ayaba o kisuku, ayaba o kifoya. In the words you say, I'll do anything for ya. Anywhere you go, I go round, round to. You know, say one plus one or two. When I need to say you, eh? Now you, I go round, round to. Ile awadu. I can't even call me. Ile awadu. Orukati don't wanna. You have made your vow. Ile ri to share God and the stars are moon for you. Ele ya let me. To share God in the stars of moon for you. Geles can tell it. Feel like a girl. 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 Thank you very much. Of course, you can follow her on all our social media platform at I am Mira and show her all the support uh, she can get. Of course, polio could not stop her and nothing can stop us. Please appreciate her one more time. Thank you very much. Moving on to a, a final panel discussion for today. Trust me, we've actually gone a, lo a whole lot and uh, we'll be wrapping it up now with other speakers to wrapping up in no time. Uh, this time around, we'll be talking about the future of tech trends, challenges, opportunities for women entrepreneurs. And the men will be telling the women how to go about it. So please join me to make welcome Mr. Ajibola Abiola. He's a self-motivated, strategic, and analytical thinker. Engineer Ajibola Abiola was the founder of Radio Electronics Development Program, REDEP, a UNESCO-recognized non-governmental organization in the 90s that promoted the study of STEM education and championed the course of technological development in Nigeria with the introduction of electronic clubs in six pilot schools as approved by the then government of Ogun State. Engineer Biola, an excellent manager of technical and human resources, is an engineer administrator who has worked in several jurisdictions and capacities at the Nigerian Television Authority, NTA, before he moved to Federal Radio Corporation of Nigeria, FRCN, in 2006 where he superintended over the technical operations of 14 radio stations in the Southwest, Edo, and Delta State. He founded the online platform Digital World Forum, DWF, as an ICT a new media professionals promoting and advocating for the integration of digital STEM skills into the economic infrastructure and education fabric of schools in Nigeria. The platform is currently extending its efforts into Nigerian schools with the introduction of Digitech Clubs. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me to make welcome Engineer Ajibola Abiola. <laughs> Up next again, of course, we have Engineer Ikechuku Namani, ATCON President. Please join us on stage. Uh, would you permit me to skip you know, some of these uh, citations since we've read that before in the course of the program. Thank you very much, sir. And uh, we also have uh, someone described him as the cybersecurity man. Mr. Obadere Peter Diwale, please join us again. A round of applause. Please allow him before we hack him again. We also have Aderemi Adejimo of Cloudflex, sir. Please join us on stage. And the moderator of this session is Taiwo Olanio. She is the head business support at Lagos State Employment Trust Fund, LSETF. A round of applause for Taiwo. And in the next 10 minutes, I know ladies are timekeepers, accurate timekeeper. In the next 10 minutes, Please help me to deal with this man. Thank you very much. Your questions are also noted down so we can take one or two and wrap up uh, the panel discussion. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. And welcome to my able-bodied panelists. <laughs> um, I, would, I would like to start with a brief introduction. I would like my, um, my each of my panelists to say their names and what they do briefly in one minute before we start with the questions and answers. Thank you. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's been very awesome being here. Um, and I want to commend uh, all the ladies in the house and those watching us uh, via Zoom. We are doing very greatly, and uh, the women, we have no doubt very much impressed. 
Um, just like uh, the Red Citation, I've been uh, Red, uh, Nigerian Television Authority for years. I was also in Radio Nigeria. I disengaged as the director of uh, National Broadcast Broadcasting Academy, where we train uh, broadcasters uh, just last year. Uh, currently, I'm the founder and the convener of uh, Digital World Forum. It's a forum where we encourage all manner of uh, digital initiatives, all the current trends and the future trends in, in, in uh, digital technology. Um, most importantly, we also we are trying to extend our tenter schools to the secondary schools by the introduction of uh, Digitech Students Club. We believe we need to catch them young, and uh, that is why we are doing a lot of job in that area to see how we can bring up our young ones, especially females, to take more interest in, in STEM education, science, tech, ed engineering, and mathematics. Thank you very much. Um, thanks. Uh, I'm Ike Namani. Um, the President CEO of Medallion Communication. Uh, we are an ICT firm involved in data center, interconnectivity of networks, and I'm also the president of uh, ArtCon, the premier telecom association for the industry. Yeah, good afternoon once again, everyone. So my name is uh, Obadare Peter Adewale. I actually co-founded a company called Digital Encode. So Digital Encode, it's a full-fledged um, local um, cybersecurity company. So basically what we do is we work with organizations to help them uh, secure their information assets. You know, you, you, we work with all the banks, a lot of all the companies across, across different sectors just to make sure that all those digital thieves and digital criminals don't break into their system. So thank you very much. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Remy Adijimo. Uh, I'm the MD of CloudFlex uh, Computing. CloudFlex is a, a cloud platform here in Nigeria. We are situated in uh, two data centers, and we plan to be in the third one this year. So I think we are the largest uh, public cloud platform in Nigeria, um, trying to move out into West Africa and provide a platform for um, all um, cloud needs in Africa. Thank you. Thank you all gentlemen, and um, thank you for supporting us. I mean the women here. We really appreciate this support. Without taking more time, I would, um, I would have a few Q&A questions for you, and I would also take in some questions from the general audience. Okay. So I would be directing this question to my right, the third gentleman on my right, <laughs> Mr. Obadari, if I'm correct, yes. Okay, we know that there are quite a number of male-dominated um, male careers. There are a lot of male-dominated spaces. Which of these spaces do you think would experience an increase or a decrease for women within the next couple of years? Okay, all right, your oh, great question. Uh, I think before uh, I will answer that question, hello, are we here? All right, so um, while the first panel session was on, there was something that came to my mind, and I think I would like to share uh, that experience before I quickly answer this question. I think the, the uh, female gender should un understand something. It's actually not about this glass ceiling that we're all talking about. I want to um, tell you that even the, ma the male too, we all have glass ceilings to, 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 to break, to be honest with you. So, and I'll give you an example of my personal self. I'm not a female, right? I'm a male. But I didn't find it very easy. Just because why? Because of my height. Do you understand? So I think, to be honest with you, today I pride myself to be um, the arguably the most credentialized 
uh, cyber secu security professional in Africa. Do you know why? People ask me, Wale, why do you have 50 professional certifications? Do you know what it is to have one, two, three, four, 50 certifications? It was because of the glass ceiling I had to break because everywhere I go, in number one, I was disadvantaged too because I went to a polytechnic, I read electrical electronics, there was no job, I had to create job for myself, and in creating job for yourself, that I started my company, everywhere you go, you first appear. Just like that, uh, the, the, uh, the girl with the three boys, you know, I, I really love her presentation. The reality is when you appear and said, okay, that's why today, myself and my partner, we don't even put CEO in our name. Yes, a lot of people wonder. They, they really ask us, why are you not a CEO? I said, I use co-founder because where, everywhere you go, they say, hey, you are the CEO. And they first look at you, CEO of what? You want to, and we struggled for, 50, for 10 years, we did not have an office. But guess what? One day, I was in the comfort of my home, and the Holy Spirit inspired me that, see, guy, all this door that you are knocking will not open until you start to hurt, which boils down to what everybody has said, whether you are a male or a female, start to add value to yourself. And all of a sudden, believe me sincerely, today I have 50 certifications. Guess what he did? He started to open the door because when people see my profile, they don't think whether the person is short or tall. You understand? They just see profile. I see myself on LinkedIn. I've seen somebody, you know, uh, DM me on LinkedIn before. And in, in that, um, um, I know there is no time. You understand? But the question is, it boils down to, because I know she's already saying there's no time. What is the future of technology is those areas we have men mentioned. Blockchain, you understand? Blockchain, cyber security, all of those areas, which I mentioned in my presentation too, a lot of women can do it. Today, the, the group CISO of Access Bank, she's a female. Today, the CIO, Chief Information Officer of Standard Chartered Bank, she's a female. So there's so many, you know, I'm not even talking, I'm talking about core technology area. So those are the areas, but because there's no time, I'll just stop there. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Obadari, and thank you for also sharing your personal experience. So it's, um, it's a lesson for us all. It is, it is honest. It is true that um, there's limitation everywhere. You'll be limited by your height, by your color, by being a female anywhere, but above all, from what um, Confidence mentioned, you just have to take the front row seat. Thank you for that once again. My next question goes thus. What um, I would be addressing my second gentleman from my right. What are the challenges in the tech space that women should be aware of? Um, thanks. Um, there are a few of them, but I think the most important is to reflect on what he just said that some of these challenges is universal. It's not just, uh, it's not gender specific because one of the good things about the ICT space is totally gender neutral. If there's any profession or sector that is gender neutral is the ICT space. You know, at the end of the day, it comes down to zeros and ones, you know. Um, and uh, so the challenges uh, you have to look at is one infrastructure. Um, in our country, we still have a lot of, uh, infrastructure that is not where it needs to be. Um, if you want to, the internet, for instance, is not very robust. We still don't have broadband connectivity across most parts of it. So um, every female like the male will still face these challenges in terms of having adequate connectivity. So even if you want to do distance learning, as we've recommended, a lot of people should go online and learn. If you don't have the bandwidth to do that, you, you're just going to face it. The second one is the... Um, platform right i'm very happy for a lot of the initiative that is out here but a time comes where you need to be practical in what you are doing right it's not everything you can learn online so you must have the right environment where you go like in my company we have a very robust uh, training program for it and even nysc students right just to be able to train them and give them a platform to learn practical stuff. So if you work in a data center, for instance, you get to 
interface with the kind of data center we run, which is um, multi-tenant uh, kind of data center. You get to work with everybody. In fact, it's so funny because um, a lot of my staff, they end up working with big organizations that naturally they may not be able to be employed with directly. But because these are people using our service, they have to troubleshoot with them, provide them first level of technical support and all that. And if it helps, um, our data center in Abuja is pretty much run by females. The head of our operation in Abuja data center is a lady. Her assistant is also a lady, right? So uh, it kind of helps to put some of these things in perspective that I'm talking of a data center that literally have the biggest infrastructures, you know, of some of the bigger companies we know today uh, in that facility is being managed by uh, two females. So um, the, the challenges are there, but it's no different from what we all face, whether we are male or female. It's just challenges with the country as, a, as an institution, uh, and that's probably the way I'll look at it. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much yeah. for that. Um, apt response. My third question goes to um, the gentleman on my father's, on my father's right. Um, I deliberately do not ask Mr. Badiri this question because it's in line with what he does. So there's this new trend, cyberspace, women in cybersecurity and all of that. What is your opinion about this new, this new phase for women? What do you have to say? Encouragement? Is it something that most women should consider, or are there other areas they need to look into? Thank you for the question. Um, I think from everything that's been said today, I mean, from my point of view, um, and I think uh, uh, Angela Namani just um, touched on it, is that there's a gap between graduation and working. Um, I always give people this example. I worked um, for Citibank in London for five years. I worked in a team, there were 15 of us. And of that 15, nine of us didn't go to university. And one of those nine was a team lead of us 15. And within that 15, I had a gentleman who was a graduate from University of Cambridge. And yet he, his team lead was a guy who didn't go to university. So one of the key things for me that I see and I advocate is the practical skill rather than the um, formal qualification. I think we had um, the previous panel talked about it where it, um, you know, talking about doing jam and all the other things and not doing a course that you should actually do and things like that. You need to look at the numbers and look at it. The whole university population in Nigeria is two million. Um, the population of Nigerians who are under 26 is 120 million. So you look at the number of people at uh, every year that are 16 years old, 17, 18, and so on. It's far more than the number of university places that you have. So really, what you want is a practical experience. So there should be more 16, 17-year-olds going straight into work, not looking for something or not looking at anything. Even if you want to be entrepreneurial, you should have some learning. Because I say to even the so-called entrepreneurs, you've got to know something about accounting. If you can't read your bank statement or you can't read a, a bank balance, how do you run a company? You've got to know something about people management. How do you manage people without any experience in that? You've got to know something about sales. You've got to know something about the different areas. And all these things you can learn by an internship, by just working somewhere, watching the seasoned people, how they do these things. Because and it's not intuitive, and it's not something that you can just be logical about, no matter how bright you are. So even a lot of the things, and even look at the cutting edge of, of, um, of uh, technology today, you, as you talk about in cyberspace, we talk a lot about data science. But data science deals with um, large data, which we don't have in Nigeria. So it's not about going for a master's degree. It's about learning practically, even the courses and everything like that. And what a society has done, or what even the COVID has done for us, as somebody else said as well, is that you now have Zoom. You now have a focus on online learning. Even the best universities, um, Harvard, Oxford and Cambridge, they give free courses now. So you can learn from the best. Gone are the days that you have to apply before you get that experience from there. So a lot of it is, uh, like has been said, uh, confidence about the front seat. Um, I think uh, uh, Mr. Bate just mentioned now about um, valuing yourself. And if you look at it, what he didn't tell you is that he learned by himself. He didn't go for a master's degree. He studied, 
did certifications and became relevant. So I think we, we need to be um, sensitive about what the steps are and emulate what people have done that they've made them successful to be successful as well. And it doesn't matter what you are, because the truth of it, what, and I think one of the things I take away from Mr. Badir is that, okay, I'm short, uh, I'm black, I'm uh, female, um, like the singer, I'm a polio survivor. I don't look like your typical um, best candidate. But then if I have the skills and I have the certification, all of a sudden, all those, my qualities now pale into insignificance. And what matters is that I have that qualification to be the most apt candidate for what they're looking for, whether it's by the experience, by the, uh, by the certification you have, or by the things you've learned, and by the skills that you have acquired yourself, you've brought yourself to the forefront of being the best candidate for that job. Thank you, thank you so much for that answer. Um, at least now to the audience, we know that, um, to summarize what has been said so far, education is not just in the four walls of an academic institution. You can learn, we, we should keep learning any and everywhere. There are resources online, offline for you to learn. And above all, um, you need to gain practical experience because that's really what determines how far you would go. You can learn, but if you don't have the opportunity to apply what you have learned, it's just knowledge for knowledge's sake, permit me to say. So practical experience, um, tap into opportunities, voluntary opportunities in organizations, internship opportunities, if, an, um, if a full-time job is not up forthcoming, you can take advantage of myriads of opportunities that are available. My last question is, is for you, sir. First question, are you married? No, very much married. <laughs> married. OK, permit me to ask, what does your wife do? What, oh, is, uh, what is job does she do? She's a public servant. OK, she's a public servant. Yes. OK, how supportive are you of our career? Ah, well, we, it is very important that we support our women which, of course, we have been doing in every way. Um, we encourage her to at least be a chosen career. For example, now we make sure that uh, she make progress by enrolling for courses online, open university. I just told her about open university so that she can do some uh, courses online too and stuff like that because uh, Knowledge is uh, endless. We need to keep upgrading ourselves, especially the women folk. They need to keep on upgrading and improving on themselves. This is very important. Yes. Thank you so much, sir. Do we have any questions from our audience for any of our panelists? One, two questions. Do we have any show of hands? Um, let me... Can I quickly say something? Um, yeah, the foundation for all this, uh, of these uh, digital skills, and everything we have been talking about, the foundation is this STEM thing that we have just mentioned. So for those of us that are just uh, giving birth to children, especially female, let's encourage them to take on STEM subjects at the secondary level. This is the very most important thing, because that is where you prepare them. Uh, the, the mindset that uh, women don't like uh, mathematics, physics, and all the rest of that, that should be you know, erased out of their minds. This is where it starts from. So let's encourage them to you know, get more interested, get more involved in science subjects, in technology subjects, engineering, and mathematics. It's very important. That is the foundation. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Without further questions, I would like to end this panel session. Thank you, gentlemen, and do have a fantastic day. Thank you very much. Please, while you're still there, we're going to take the photos and, of course, presenting the certificates. Thank you very much for your time. The day is really fast spent. Conveners, are you ready, Ugochi? Can we have the plaques for our panelists? And to do justice in presenting this, we're going to call on Dr. Toby Ayodele to help present this. Even if you are the one talking afterwards, so you will not go to sit again. You do double, double work. 
Are we ready? A round of applause to our moderator. You did a fantastic job in dealing with the men as usual. Thank you. Is our ArtCon chairman not a gentleman? He's a gentleman to the core. You guys are doing. All right, let's have the mic. Thank you very much. Um, so without further ado, let's start presenting the awards. So this is for Dr. Peter Obadari. Congratulations. Please give me a round of applause. It's been really good today. And this is presented to engineer Aderemi Adejumu. Congratulations. of engineers. This is to engineer. My dad's an engineer, so that's good. My husband is an engineer, my, my, and my brother is an engineer. So yes, this is presented to engineer Ajibola Abiola. Congratulations. Another engineer, nice. And this is presented to engineer Ikechuku Namani. Congratulations. <laughs> and the last but not least is it presented to Taiwo Olaniyo. Congratulations. Congratulations. Let's strike a pose. Strike a pose. Strike a pose. All right, thank you very much. A round of applause as they go back to their seats while we arrest Dr. Toby Ayodele Kini on the stage. She's going to be balancing all of this. We've been talking about how you can be techpreneurs, how to make money, how to be the billion dollar, but nobody's talking about managing stress. So please permit me to go through an abridged profile of Dr. Toby. Dr. Toby Ayodele Kini is the managing director of mentorship of her mother, Mrs. Quincy Ayodele and was able to push the brand into the international market. She is also a qualified licensed physician of naturopathic and traditional medicine. Quincy Wellness and uh, Wellness Center products are now sold in Amazon and has featured in the Oscars, Grammys, and has seen on television. Please, a round of applause for her. She's pa she passionately believes in collaboration between traditional medicine and conventional medicine as the best way to improve the healthcare of Nigeria as a whole. Ladies and gentlemen, Join me to make welcome Dr. Toby Ayodele Kini as she talks to us about stress management. Thank you so much. Um, good afternoon, everyone. All protocols observed. Can I walk around? I have to be stuck on that podium. Walk around, perfect. So um, we're going to be talking about ah, which which accent do I use today? Let me try and Nigerianize it a bit. So we're going to be talking about stress management. So. We've been talking a lot about tech, women in tech. Um, we have to use our phones. We have to monetize our lives. We have to be digital. Uh, let, me, let me just do a, a summary, you know. We have to, um, you know, we have issues accessing funds. We need to have opportunities to expand and grow. Some problems are opportunities to launch you into the next level. I mean, this is a lot of stuff, and I'm loving it. So. Please just let's give everyone a round of applause that spoke today because um, I'm very happy I came. I'm happy that I'm here. So we're going to talk about stress management. You know, it's only the living that can transact business. Do we all agree? I mean, there are some dead people still making money, but you know what? We're not talking about them. Uh -huh. But it's only the living that can transact business. We're all here. We're eating something. We're learning. We're reading. We're seeing is because we are actually alive. Now, there are some people that are alive and they're not here right now. 
because they can't walk or they're in the hospital or COVID has claimed a family member or somebody. Now, um, who wants to agree or disagree with me? Nigeria is a stressful, Niger no, my village, I come from Kogi State, there's no stress there. Um, Lagos is a stressful environment, yes or no? Who believes Lagos is not stressful? Just raise your hand up so that we can, we can punish you. Who believes Lagos is not stressful? Someone believes Lagos is not stressful. Ah, we'll see you at the end of the, uh, uh, just meet me outside, no problem. So what are the stressors of Lagos? Number one for me is traffic. Traffic is horrible. Okay, we want to digitalize our lives, Abi. If you are now the one driving in your car, you cannot press your phone to make money. You are now in, you are now in traffic for four hours and matching break for four hours while money is running down the drain. Or the second one, network. Who is having problems with network issues? How many people only have one network? On their, how many people have only one phone that is one network? I cannot buy a phone that is not dual SIM. No matter how important that phone is because I need MTN, Glow, Airtel, 9 Mobile, everything. And there are some days that all five networks will decide that today, oh, in fact, sometimes you have to lay hands on your network. That Father Lord, in Jesus' name, starts working. Yes, that's number two. Number three, our problem that we have is power. We have gen, on gen, sometimes the gen will pack up, Nepal didn't come, they put on inverter. Inverter will pack up, will bring small gen, bring the smaller one, petrol gen, diesel gen. And our businesses still have to run. So I don't want to hear what anybody has to say that this world, I mean, I'm sure some people, maybe the people on the top are, you know, eh, eh, but we here today, we can say that we are stressed. Then women especially, I don't care what anybody says, women especially, especially in Nigeria, are under a lot of stress. We're under a lot of stress to look good. If I came here the way I woke up, by the time I reach the gates and come, they'll say, Madam or Auntie or who, I hope nothing. If I didn't look, you know, more men, what they'll do? They'll bath. They'll just brush their hair to the front. They'll wear suits, put on socks, carry, carry a book bag, whatever, something. I'll be like, oh, honey, you look good. Abby, yes or no? But women will wake up. We're supposed to be Proverbs 31 woman, Abby, good. Wake up, I have two boys. Congrats to the person that has three boys. I, I can't, I, I'm not, I hope it doesn't happen to me, but let me just say, hey. So I'll wake up, we women will wake up, we get the children ready for school in the morning. Even if you have a maid, you still have to be involved to an extent with the child. Then you get them ready, you, they go on their way, you will now start with we'll bath. We can rub three different soap and rub three different cream so that we can glow. Then we will now start with the hair. Some will have called it the night before. Some have to call it that day. Then how many people are wearing a wig right now? You know that we will now put a cap under the hair, tighten it, hold it down, now carry another wig, which is a cap, put on the hair again and comb it. Then we have not worn waist trainer, high heel. We are so uncomfortable. And upon that, someone will tell you that, ah, your eye is looking somehow, so they hope nothing. And then we are supposed to still go to work or own our businesses. And, oh, I forgot, every month we bleed with cramps, different things. Men don't want to hear, but we bleed every month yeah, until we see menopause. And not, when we now see menopause, it's wahala too. So, that is already stress. I've not even talked about the definition of stress. I'm just talking about just being a woman, just being alive. We've now come home. Mommy, 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 yeah, 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 something happened. Then maybe house girl beats the other house girl. Driver, punch, uh, guest man. You have to now settle matter. Then daddy will come from work. Daddy, how are you? We sit down on the stool. My husband is a white man. 
and I didn't marry and know this. Norm we met normal love, the way everybody meets it. You know, normal, I met my husband, we fell in love, we got married. Normal young man, no. He will come from wherever he's coming from. He says, his husband is making money. He will sit down. Then we'll now arrange stool in front of him. Ah, the men, are we, are we, women, are we communicating? We we'll arrange stool. Then we we'll put tray, arrange fork, knife, wrap it in subjects, put it beside him. Then we we'll now arrange the food for him. He will eat it. Then he will go and bath. Then the children will run, 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 do some things. He doesn't know, he doesn't know where, how, what has happened the whole day. The uh, driver beats this man, house girl fell down, something. They don't know. And then if you now say, let me lie down, they say, ah, you are lazy. Or you are, uh, my wife, my friend's wife can carry uh, 20 kil kilograms on her, foot, on her head and trek from yes to So that is the stress. As I'm married to a white man, I mean, I'm, he's an American, but a man is man at the end of the day. I don't, you know, he's a, he's a normal man. So, <laughs> uh -huh, he's only boy, yeah, but you yes, see, so. uh -huh, to the point that I, even got into, I don't speak. Oh my God, how are you? I don't do that one again. I'm tired. I've been doing it for 13 years. So, I'm like this Yoruba. My children are speaking it. They're hearing you. You're still here. You came before them. You're not yet speaking the Yoruba. <laughs> so, is it when they translate to you before you? Anyway, Sha, me, this is how I'm going to be talking to you. If you can hear me, hear me. If you cannot, I cannot kill myself again. We have been forced to speak English. I've been forced to worship uh, your religion. I've been forced to wear your clothes. We have even been forced to eat your food. Now, 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 force my mouth again to be paining me. Mm -mm, no, I'm not. I'm not doing. So now, stress management. Hey, Tibere. Ah, I stress you, <laughs> So, what is stress? Is a state of mental or emotional strain or tension from adverse or very demanding circumstances, just like what we just mentioned today. It's also your body's response to physical, mental, or emotional pressure causing chemical changes in your body. We have all these enzymes and chemicals that can raise your blood pressure, heart rate, blood sugar levels. It can lead to feelings of anxiety, anger, depression, and it can be acute, meaning Bam, stress, generator, transformer blue, acute. It can be episodic acute, meaning that transformer blows every two weeks. Or it can be chronic. We live in Lagos, and whatever goes with Lagos is how it is. Or maybe an abusive relationship, or having a child that has a disability, or having, you know, COVID-19 pandemic that has been around since 20. 20, we are still there, we are still praying. So now, how do we manage stress? Because unless we leave the country, oh, America, I left there, I came back here. There's another stress there too. Unless we leave the, con unless we leave the country or go and live in a bush somewhere, we are going to be constantly exposed to stress. So how do you manage it? First of all, I tell people, slow down. Life is too short to stress. You bl you, I, I just blinked and I've given birth, I've had children. I, I mean, I'm like, uh-uh. This is not just last year I finished secondary school. So slow down because God forbid you die from stress because you can actually die from stress. The world will keep turning. Your business will even run. Maybe it will do better because maybe you're the bad blood inside the place. So, you understand, people will do what, life will move on. So, just slow down. If you notice that you cannot control yourself, you're always getting stressed, your blood pressure is high, this is happening, you need to slow down. down. Take time for yourselves. As women, we need our me time. You need to lock your door and watch. It's not, by, it's not everything, reading Bible, prayer, prayer. Just lock your door, watch something that is distracting and just, or sleep. And if you cannot sleep, drink something and sleep. So that you can sleep, so that you can actually rest. Sir, whatever you can use to relax, drink it and relax. Even if it's once a week, it is very necessary. Then number three, I always tell people, talk about your problems. We are used to internalizing our problems. So talk about it, just like what our speaker said. 
Tell somebody, not a biased person that will say you have to manage yourself and endure. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Talk to somebody about it. And then the last thing I'll tell you is please take care of your health. Don't, don't ignore your health and don't ignore signs and warning signs while you are trying to be that nurturing mother, that, that um, you know, expanding your career, building your empire, and then you now truncate your life in the middle of it. So please take time for your health. I tell women three things you need to watch for. Your blood pressure, your cholesterol, and your blood sugar. Because we are so used to holding it in, we don't know when we're sick until it's too late. So that is something we really have to do. Then the final thing is, you see this water in front of you, I think, is it 50 CL? 50 CL, please drink six of it every day. Yes, minimum of six of it every day. Trust me, it will help. Thank you very much. A round of applause. Someone said, oh, why did you bring this one at the last time when she's telling us the cocoa? Thank you very much. We saved the best for the last. And again, while she was talking, I, 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 I flipped through my phone and I saw a BC in our news um, page that says that the chairman of the EFCC, Abdurashid Bawa, slumped at the third National Identity Day celebration at the Banquet Hall Villa. It has not been confirmed, but if that is the case, we're talking about stress. The EFCC chairman... News reaching us unconfirmed anyways. But if that has happened, you do, I mean, you agree with me with what she has said, that sometimes we bottle up all of these things and we keep going. We'll be forming James Bond, not knowing that the body too is like an engine needs to rest. So in all of this, while we are trying to make the billion dollar, trying to be the women CEO, there is time to take a, br a break and just rest. Please give it up for Dr. Toby Ayodele again. Stepping into her mom's shoes and doing fantastically well. Well done. Well done. And um, please, um, uh, Ugo, can we have um, all of the presentation so that we wrap up with the final, final one that will be talking to us about African business opportunity and then that will be it. In just two minutes, uh, Mr. Tunde Omitogo will be talking to us. But before then, let's present the certificate to uh, Quincy. Are you ready? Organizers, Biko. We also want to have um, Tinoa Day on stage for her plaque. Uh, Maureen Adrigwe too of Hope Communications, please. Let's have you on stage. And again, Dr. Toby, are your daily on stage for your uh, plaque? Yes, the organizers want to appreciate you for taking our time to be here. Hope Communications, please join us on stage. And Tino Ade too. Please come up on stage. Nitra, it will be given to us by the Nitra president, ably represented by Chideberry. Chideberry, please just do us the honors to present this. Can we all up go on stage? On stage? On stage? Thank you. Okay, this is um, the certificate of uh, appreciation to Hoop Telecoms. Um, they are doing great things in Nigeria today. So, uh, Madam, congratulations. Okay, um, the next one is presented to 
Tinua De Oguntuyi, the girl in our midst. Um, congratulations. All right, the last but not the least is um, to Toby Ayodele, um, the, the lady that makes us well. I mean, if, if you really know her, if you really know Quincy, it has come a long way. Thank you very much. to present this to the representative of the Honorable Minister. Please go up stage. Can we appreciate them all that they are doing? Remember, we have 500 people from that ministry to empower women. And I've already taken one slot. Is many for? <laughs> you are removing my name. <laughs> Please do well to take advantage so that, um, at least for those of us that are here, let's fill up those spaces before outsiders will come and chance us. Abby? <laughs> Tunde Omitogun, please get ready. CEO of His Plus, African Business Opportunities and Investment, is what he'll be talking to us in the next three minutes of our time, and it will be a wrap. Seriously, I'm not doing any of that today. That's the last for today. Thank you very much, Ma. God bless you. Please, let's give it up for Mr. Tunde Omitogun as he takes the stage. Hello. <clears throat> Can I have your ears? Um, I won't waste much of your time. Um, business opportunities in Africa. But I won't go far. I'll start with you. Let me stay here. I want to, I'm going to ask you one question from the women. What part of your design of things you wear? Is this my shoe? I'm wearing. What part of your design? Somebody designed it is a woman. And she used a part of woman attire to do it. What part of your wear? Oh, something like this. Sequence. The thing you wear, the thing that is on you, what is it? No. What is it? You are just looking. Yes. That is what they All these emojis. That you see. instead of you to use your design to be doing emojis, you will be put, you will be using the emojis done alone by WhatsApp. These are things. All these your selfie that you are doing, people are using it to make money online. You are doing fifty hundred selfies in a day and you cannot make anything up. People are using it to design clothing. Your hair braids, fantastic design. There is a. Um, there is a video that was um, that is still trending. Um, when that man said, Funke! Hey, come and see your son. No, do you know who knows that uh, this thing? That man that uh, the child, the son, pray pranks. The man Funke is beyond that. The man couldn't have, had it been that thing that happened, who do you think will have find solution to that thing? The woman. She, he was invariably saying that, Funke, what are we going to do? What I'm saying is this. Women has more intelligence. You are, you are really, whether you are low or high, you, are, you really have it. You just don't use it. Most of you, your husband will come to you. What can I do? So what I'm saying in essence is business opportunities in Africa, 
there was an investment like this that we did some time ago, and a guy, a businessman, got about one billion, no, sorry, one, one point five million dollars. He disappeared with it. He used it to go and buy Ferrari. Women won't use phone like that. Only man misuse phones. So you are really at the right place at the right time to do some things. So in wrapping it up, I'm supposed to go through presentation, but there is no time. Ten African countries, UAE, the investors are coming to. It's hybrid. And any kind of business that you know can, that you can innovate, that is good, you can come and display it and show your stuff to the investors. And investors, if you are able to, is what you call virtual D room, meaning that 10 investors will sit at your project and view it. Is it going to be, is it profitable? Is it a new thing? Yes, it is a new thing. Then they will invest on you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hasn't it been a wonderful day? Did we get value for what we have today? Is it worth your time? Are you sure? Please, a round of applause for the conveners. A round of applause for yourself for being patient up until this time. Thank you very much. But I'm not going to be doing the thanking myself. I'm going to call on the conveners, Ugochi, Manuel, and Evelyn Ezingwa, to come tell us how appreciative they are of your presence. And again, a talking has been given to us. The restaurant is just behind, just uh, outside as you step out. Go there and have some relieve distress for today and have lunch, okay? Of course, uh, Ugochi, please come forward. After the vote of thanks, we'll say the closing prayer and lunch will be served. A round of applause for them. They did a fantastic job, trust me. Before I hand over this mic to my, um, my colleague, my co-convener, permit me to read this out to every one of us. Success belongs to those who wake up every morning and pursue their dreams regardless of the hardship. Success is not for those who have made up their minds not to give up. Sorry, success is for those who have made up their minds not to give up. Not to give up and not to throw in the towel. It is for those who have said it is not going to be over until I win. Success is for those who don't suffer from what would people say or what are people saying syndrome. Success is for you. Never underestimate the ability and the potential that has been invested in you through hard times. Keep shining, keep shining, keep shining. Thank you. Yeah, keep shining, keep shining, keep shining. Thank you, everyone. We are happy. We are grateful to God. We are coming to the end of the summit. What I hope you know is the beginning of your self-exploitation. You have your inherent values in you. You have gotten some information. You have learned a lot of ideas. I hope you are working out there for people that are here and some people that are watching via Zoom and via Facebook. I hope you have gotten something to run with, to buttress your business and to make yourself a better you. Um, I just want to let the cat out of the bag this afternoon. It's going to be a yearly event. It's going to be something that you have to look up to every year. And i um, going to say something. Yesterday night, when we, Goshi and I, when we knew that this one has been done, by the grace of God, we have started writing to international entrepreneurs that are already re replying to us that are going to be here in the next summit. We have written to Facebook owner and he's responding that he's going to come to tell us some of the ways he was able to break bounds. I wish to thank every one of you that despite your tight schedules, you made it some time and said, yes, I have to be here today. I take some of you that flew from different places. I take some you companies that also came and represented us and actually gave us some sponsorship. We are grateful to all of you. We thank God Almighty for making it a memorable one. I hope you have learned something. 
I hope you are getting out here better informed, and I hope you are going to use whatever you have learned today to exploit the inherent values you have. On behalf of Ugocha and I, and sorry, I want to say something, and please follow us on our website, www.techugo.com. You will see so many events that we are rolling out from next month, and it's going to be very informative. Thank you, thank you, thank you. On behalf of Ugocha and I, we are wrapping it up. We say sit down, relax, and enjoy your meal. Thank you very much. Just a quick correction. IG is at techlife underscore with underscore Ugo. Please follow her on all social media platforms. Also, all of what has happened here today is on our YouTube page at Tech Life with Ugo on YouTube. We appreciate you and we look forward to a better season two. Please, a round of applause for yourselves one more time. As I urge you to be upstanding, let's take the national anthem as our closing prayer as we march to the kitchen for lunch. If the sound is ready. For the bank loan, please, you see Ugochi for all of the empowerments that was talked about, please. Thank you very much. I do have yourselves a lovely journey back home. Please do not forget to get your token from the organizers. It will be your ticket to the kitchen for your lunch. Remember that if you want to be part, part, part of all of the um, empowerment as uh, announced by the Ministry of Women Affairs, please see Ugochi. Please see Ugochi for all of the information that you need to be part of the 500 people that will be empowered, you know, seamlessly by the Ministry of Women Affairs. My name is Louisa Olani, and by the grace of God, I'm the master of ceremony. I can go anywhere for your events. Just give us a call, the number you got earlier on, and it will be my honor to host your event. Thank you very much for being a fantastic guest, a fantastic audience. See you next year. Bye-bye.